presents NCAA football. The Illinois Fighting Illini versus the Wisconsin Badgers. Today's game is sponsored by Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. And by Allstate, for home, auto, business, health, and life, you're in good hands with Allstate. Wisconsin Badgers have been averaging in excess of 76,000 fans for their home games in 1982 and will have more than that here today. Almost 80,000 it's a sellout and the reason is because this is a critical Big Ten encounter. Both Illinois and Wisconsin are chasing Michigan right now. The Wolverines are 4-0. Illinois 4-1. They get Wisconsin in two weeks. Wisconsin has already lost to Michigan and that's the team I met but they both have Rose Bowl hopes at this time. Good afternoon everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with former Michigan quarterback Dennis Franklin, who in three years in the mid-70s led the Wolverines to 30 wins, two defeats at one time. Good to work with you, Dennis. It's nice being here, too, uh, Vern. It's a big game, and I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a great game. Illinois is favored by two. They've got Tony Eason, a great, wide-open offensive attack. What do you expect? What must they do to win? Well, I think everybody expects for Tony Eason to come out and throw and have a great offensive football game, but I really feel the key offensively for Illinois is to come out and establish the run early in the football game as early as possible, in fact. Defensively, what keys might be there for them? Well, defensively, they, they use a lot of people. They bring in defensive backs. They try to keep their offensive linemen fresh. So I expect them to blitz a lot and, and create a lot of turnovers like they've done in the past. Now, Dave McLean's Wisconsin Badgers lost their first two games of the year to UCLA and Michigan, but they're on a roll. They have won four in a row, albeit by small margins, but what must they do? Well, Randy Wright has got to uh, get the offense going early in the football game, and they have to sustain long drives. They have to come out and get the 10, 12-yard uh, uh, touchdown plays and keep the ball away from Tony Easton on offense. Defensively, I think their secondary coverage is going to have to be tremendous. And uh, if they do the right things defensively in that secondary, they, I know they got some things planned, and they're looking to pick off a few of Tony Easton's passes. Here they come, the Badgers, at home in Camp Randall Stadium. Dave McLean, the head coach, has been highly successful here since joining this staff five years ago from Ball State. As we said, they have won their last four. They have been by slight margins. They are underdogs today by two. We have a pristine day for football, NCAA football on CBS. 46 degrees, very slight win. It ought to be a heck of a game. We'll be right back. And officiating crew today, the referee is Otho Courts, the umpire Don Mason, Ed Check, the linesman, Tom Hoffman, the line judge. Field judge is Mike Sheehan, and the back judge is Tom Klein. An absolutely gorgeous morning and afternoon, 46 degrees, the humidity 79%, a slight breeze out of the south at 7 miles per hour, and the forecast continued gorgeous. And you can see part of the crowd that will exceed 78,000 today. Wisconsin has won the toss. There are the fighting Illini. And they will be kicking off. Mike White, now in his third year as the head coach of Illinois, former head coach of California, and also spent a couple of years on the staff with Bill Walsh and the San Francisco 49ers. Badgers are dressed in their home red with white pants. And Mike Bass will kick off. Bass, one of the most highly successful place kickers in NCAA this season. He is 13 out of 15. And only 17 of his 42 kickoffs have been returned this year. He's barefoot, Dennis, and he only did that this year. Last year, he kicked with a uh, shoe and sock. That's true, Vern. He, he, he uh, said to me that he felt like he couldn't get the footing that he wanted uh, kicking with a shoe on, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And so he uh, got rid of the shoe, and now he feels comfortable kicking uh, barefooted. His dad, Tom Bass, the defensive coordinator of the San Francisco Chargers, is in attendance. Gary Ellerson, number 41, is the deep man of three. Illinois and Wisconsin, the Big Ten. And a very important ball game for both clubs. Otho Course says, let's have at it. Here comes Mike Bass. Be returned. Wisconsin takes over. First and ten at their own 20. Going to the south. They will start Randy Wright at quarterback. Chucky Davis, who had a big day last week in the win over Michigan State. Gerald Green, the fullback. Tim Strucker and Al Toon, the wide receivers. There's a flag on the play, by the way. 
Volko, of course, talking it over. Here's the offensive line. Jeff Nall, Bob Winkler, who's an All-Big Ten candidate. Mark Subak, Ron Persnick, Jeff Dellenbach, and Kevin Belcher. Big sophomore. Volko Kortz will walk off the play. Personal foul against Illinois, which puts a look of chagrin on Mike White's countenance to begin the day. Well, I think they want to set that pace early and let uh, Illinois may want to let the Wisconsin players know that they're Dead here. ball, personal foul, the kicking team. First down. That cost them 15. It'll be first and 10 after 35. Randy White brings him up. Tim Straka breaks wide to the right side. Randy White. A key to the victory in the cover behind win last week. And he'll throw with a play action rollout on first down. Has the man open deep. Straka first down at the 50. Tim Straka, a senior from Madison, a hometown kid who was a red shirt a year ago because of an injury. Defensively for Illinois, Nick Epps, Dan Grigas, Don Thorpe, and Terry Cole up front, the linebackers in this 4-3 offense are Pete Burgard, Mike Weingrad, and Daryl Bird. And the defensive secondary will be Mike Evan, Charles Armstead, David Jones, uh, David Edwards, and Mark Jones. First and 10, Wisconsin at the midfield strike. David Keeling and Michael Jones have come in at wide receivers now. Operating from the eye, the deep, deep back is Chucky Davis. And off up the middle to the big fullback, Gerald Green, a senior out of Waukegan, Illinois. And that's good for a plunge of four. Mark Jones, number 30, made the tackle. Al Toon and Tim Straka come back in. We will see that pattern throughout the afternoon. Not just one wide receiver bringing in the play, Dennis, but they'll substitute them both. That's right. Uh, Wisconsin has the luxury of having uh, such great wide receivers. They bring them in uh, together. Straka and Toon and Jones and uh, Toon. Motion now from Al Toon, number 87. This is Chucky Davis. First and 10 at the 33. Daryl Bird and David Edwards knocked him out of bounds. And Wisconsin is moving here early in the ballgame. A 13-yard gain worth another look. I really feel that the key to this play is Illinois has got the type of team that blitzes a lot. They uh, rely on their mobility or their movement. And uh, this time they got off to the ball, got off the ball quickly. But uh, Chucky Davis made a great cutback on that draw play, and uh, that's what the key to the success was. First and ten for the 33. White keeps it this time. Goes in the single cover. It's a complete to David Keeling, a sophomore out of Cincinnati. The tackle made by Charles Armstead, number 43, but not before 48, made the tackle made the catch. You can see that uh, Wright realizes that Keeling here has got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He goes down, runs a fairly good cut, but uh, the ball was really delivered kind of late. Uh, the key that time on Wright was that he threw the ball to the sideline, not allowing the defender to come up and make the interception. Second down, one. High formation. Davis the deep back. Ball at 24. Chucky Davis. Works through a hole, and he's got the first down, 10 at the 20-yard line. Tackle made by the two defensive tackles, Dan Grigas, number 92, and Don Thorpe, 96. Well, they wanted Dennis Franklin to control the ball early on, and they have indeed done that. Absolutely. Uh, ever since uh, their first possession with the first down play, uh, they came up with a big first down, and you can see uh, head coach uh, Dave McClain there on the sidelines keeping things under control. Now Troy King and Gary Ellison have come in the backfield. Play action pass. Blitz is on. They got him. Randy Wright. They were coming on the blitz. Charles Armstead, number 43. We expect the Illini to blitz all afternoon. Yeah. Vern, I'm really surprised that the Illini haven't uh, blitzed earlier than this. You can see the inside backers, number 63 in particular, Clint Hayes here, coming inside. No one touched him. And he gets in to make the tackle. He's a junior out of Gardena, California. It'll be second down and 19. Loss of nine in the last play. No score. Early moments of the game. The blitz coming again. Wright beats it this time. And he's got the catch completed for 19 yard line. Tim Strucka, number 42, made the grab in front of Charles Armstead. Second catch for Strucka. Early moments of the game. 
came in with 47 catches for the year. A senior out of Madison. Third down and nine, nonetheless. The ball at the 20. Five-man front showing a blitz look for Illinois. They are not blitzing. White with time, and there should be a flag down. There is. Two of them. Charlie Armstead at the 43, cut under the intended receiver. David Keeler. That'll be an automatic first down. So this Wisconsin drive that began with a penalty is helped by a penalty. Defensive pass interference. The indication from referee Otho Courts. Spot of the foul and an automatic first and ten inside a first and goal. Pass interference. Defense, first down. First, first and goal for the nine. 11.32 to go, first quarter, no score. The Illini have not had the ball. Straka, wide left. Al Thune is wide right. Randy Wright is changing at the line of scrimmage. Now they get it off to Gerald Green into the five-man front. Green breaks a couple of tackles to the two. Greg Swope, a freshman. Look at it again. Turn the point you make at the beginning of the play. Uh, Randy Wright here called that play at the line of scrimmage. They figure he'll do that about 50% of the time. And uh, that time he, he saw an isolation over the center. Felt that the center could get that key block and handed the ball off to Gerald Green, who uh, picked up uh, good yardage. Second down and goal. This will not get in. It'll be third and one. Let's make the point early that in its five wins, Illinois has scored first. In its two losses, Illinois has not scored first. And Wisconsin is on the verge. Pete Mulcrone comes in defensively now. Third and goal from the two. Gary Ellerson and Chucky Davis are the running backs, and they will line up in the eye. Ellerson, the short man. Davis ducks it. A double tight end set with two split wide right. Third down. yards took almost five minutes and Wisconsin has scored first that will not be the last score today and it's interesting that we said that at the top of the show that that's what they needed to do in order to get into this football game and establish uh, their presence and they came out with a 10 play uh, drive exactly what uh, coach McClain would like them to do today they batter Cam Benson in the middle he's flanked by Thomas Brooks and Joe Miles and Wendell Bradham will kick off this one will not be returned either Cam Benson drops to one. Maybe the Illini have it. First down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Thomas Rooks, rather, number 42. Let's take a look at the Illini offense. Tony Easton, the quarterback. The running backs are Joe Curtis and Mike Murphy. Mike Martin and Kirby Wilson, the wide receivers. Offensive line, the tight end is Tim Brewster. Then John Gennato, Rick Schulte, Mark Kelly, Chris Babiar, and Jim Juriga. First down, 10 at the 20. And your first look this afternoon at the Heisman candidate, Tony Easton become the fourth all-time passer in the Big Ten with 58 yards today, and he's not been held under 200 in his last 15 games. Three wide receiver offense, DC straight drop back. Plenty of time. Then as he lets it go, and the ball is caught by Mike Martin. First down at the 43. 
Mike Martin, the senior out of Washington, D.C., and Eason really had to show some courage because he was clobbered. Well, this is what makes a great passer, Vern. Uh, he drops back here, sets up strong, but uh, the thing that impressed me the most was he threw it, and there was nobody there when he threw the pass. You can see uh, Mike Murphy just come into your uh, number four, come into your pitch at the last minute and pick off the pass. High formation, and off goes to Joe Curtis, number 21, the senior out of Chicago. And he's met by Jim Milka, the leading tackler for Wisconsin. The defensive line for the Badgers, Darrell Sims, Tim Crumry, and Mark Shoemate. Crumry, the All-American. The linebackers, Kyle Borland, Jody O'Donnell, Jim Milka, who made the tackle, and Brad Grabo. And in the defensive secondary, Brian Morrow, Rich Baxter, Dave Greenwood, and Matt Vandenboom, another All-American. Second down, nine. Easton to throw for the second time. Puts it out, it's caught. A drop, incomplete, at the 48. Intended for the tight end, Tim Brewster, and he couldn't hang on. Eason one for two, it'll be third down and nine, and one of the real problems for the Illini this season has been their third down conversion, Dennis. They're only converting 26% of their third down plays. Well, that's true because they don't put themselves in that situation that often. They, they go ahead and uh, get first downs and first and second down so that they never get in the third down situation. They've got one now, and the Badgers are showing the blitz look that they are not coming. Eason with plenty of time, but nobody there. He can roll out, but he still can't find anybody open. Mark Shoemate gets there first, number 76, and Tim Brumrine, number 15, gets there second. Chris Sigourney, Sigourney, a uh, senior out of Elgin, Illinois, for the first punt of the afternoon. Deep man is Gary Ellison and Brian Morrow. Morrow waits for it and will let it limp on into the end zone. Touchback, Wisconsin ball at the 20-yard line. A 58-yard punt for Chris Sigourney. Wisconsin has a 7-0 lead, and they've also got the football for the second time today. clear blue skies a sellout crowd the home team on top here at camp randall stadium in madison wisconsin i'm Berman lundquist along with dennis franklin eight minutes 38 seconds remaining in the first quarter the badgers lead it over the illini seven nothing first and ten at the 20. scoring offense we'll have some points on the board today high formation on first down ten it's out to chucky davis who reverses directions and is caught for a loss of the 18. Don Thorpe, a junior wearing number 96 out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, had that one diagnosed at the outset. It'll be a loss of one, second down, 11. They run a 4-3, but it is not, Dennis Franklin, what we think of as a professional 4-3, is it? Uh, no, it's not, Vern. They, they, uh, their offensive, or the defensive linemen uh, slant a lot. They do a lot of different stunts on, the, on their uh, front four, and it's not really what you call pro 4-3. Matter of fact, the five-man front this time, and it's almost picked off. Charles Armstead, number 43, drew a bead on the throw from Randy Wright and almost had six. He's got two for the year and almost picked off his third. Look at it. Well, I think uh, Armstead does a terrific job with his peripheral vision. He can see the quarterback now. You see him make his move, and the pass is a wide pass. It takes a long time and a str strong arm to get that ball out there, and Armstead anticipated it very well and almost picked it off for six points. Third and 11. Wisconsin has converted both of its previous third down opportunities. Ball at the 19-yard line, 7 nothing. Wisconsin has the lead. One set back, three wide receivers. A two-step drop, and the pass is almost in for, uh, intercepted again. We have a flag away from the ball. And there may have been interference on Michael Jones. He's pleading for it, so let's see. If so, it would be the second penalty against Illinois. Nope, this time an eligible receiver downfield. That's loss of down. Illinois has had a problem with penalties all year. They are the most penalized team in the Big Ten. They've been penalized 64 times, almost double that which the opponents have uh, marked up. That's true, but the coaching staff uh, insists that that's because they're such a passing team and a, and a team that audible is such, such a great deal that a lot of times they, they're getting called for delay of games and things like that. So That's a loss of down. It'll be fourth down, 11, and George Winslow is on to punt. 
Mike Martin is one of the two return men. And Winslow from an end zone perspective. We're on our way at the 45 yard line. Here's the kick. Not much of a win. This one will bounce and take a lateral roll. We'll be down with good field position for Illinois. Kirby Wilson was also down. The Wisconsin cheerleaders pleased with the way things are going. But Illinois takes over with its best field position of the first uh, possession in the first uh, quarter. We've got seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Wisconsin has a 7-0 lead, but the Illini have the ball. I've seen Don Curry fight. He's out of Fort Worth, undefeated. 1980 Golden Gloves champion Marlon Starling was a former sparring partner of Thomas Hearns. That ought to be a good one following the game today. CBS Sports Saturday. And I've seen him fight. <laughs> have you? Yeah. That's right. It's Detroit Youngster. That's right. First down, 10. Illinois at the Wisconsin 45. 7-0, the Illini trail. Hand off goes to Joe Curtis, number 21. Cuts it down inside the 45 at the 42 and runs into Jody O'Donnell, number 44. Well, we have seen evidence, Dennis Franklin, that uh, Mike White wanted to start the running game early, and he's attempted to do so. Yeah, particularly now that he's got such great field position, you would think that a coach might think more about passing the football in this uh, part of the field than running it. So I, I think you're right. I think it's a good point. As you can see, Illinois doesn't rush the ball that much. Or can it that well? Second down and six. Second time, the kick goes to Joe Curtis, and he's jolted at the 38-yard line, again by Jody O'Donnell, number 44. That's two yards shy of the first down. And there's Jody O'Donnell, a senior out of Lockport, 6'2", 225 pounds. Third down and two. Will they keep it on the ground? They've been known to throw on third and short. Well, we'll see. Eason has his backs in the eye. Five-man front. Now they're changing at the line, as Tony Eason will do 50% of the time. Martin in the slot. They're throwing on third and two. Goes to his hot receiver on the left side. The catch is made for the first down at the 29-yard line. Kirby Wilson made the catch. Senior out of Los Angeles. That's his 11th of the year. And Mike White, who does send the plays in to Tony Eason. Well, now, weak wagon in. Let's go now, Larry! First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Three wide receiver offense again. Martin is the inside man to the left side. Now they're shifting. Double wide out, they call this. Got him. Daryl Sims, the leader of the Wisconsin sack pack, number 60. A junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And help from Tim Crumbly, number 50, the All-American nose guard. A senior out of Mondovi, Wisconsin. It'll be second down and 10, seven nothing. Wisconsin with an early lead, they scored in their first possession. 5.48 to go, first quarter to play. Screen pass, left side. Mike Murphy makes the catch, and now for an NCAA Hunter report. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Burn Houston leading 3-0 on the move against Arkansas. From the 14, Lionel Wilson throws. It's intercepted by Danny Walters of the Razorbacks. And he runs 92 yards for a touchdown. Arkansas now leads Houston 7-3. Back to Vern Lundquist. All right, Brent, I've seen both of those teams play, and Arkansas may have the best defensive unit in the United States. Here we've got a third down and five. Little flip into the flat. What? First down, Richard Riles, the fullback, number 13, makes the grab and the conversion for the Illini. Their second consecutive third down conversion. Gonna, excuse me, Dennis. I'm sorry, Vern. You're going to see a great read right here by uh, uh, Tony Easton. He gets that ball out in a hurry to uh, Riles, and that's really what made the play. Number 13, he makes a great cut and gets to the outside and picks up the first down. He really realized where he was on the field and where he had to go to get the first down. Now flag is down as the handoff goes to Dwight Beverly, number 26. 
So let's hold everything. Looks like it's against Wisconsin from the reaction of Illinois players. Oko courts offside. Whoops. Well, they didn't like that. Tony Eason talking it over. Courts indicated it was against the Illini. Uh, maybe against Wisconsin. Yep, that's the case. Our referee's mic is not working right now, so we'll not be able to hear Oko courts, but it's offside. Wisconsin. First down and five from the 10. Mitchell Brookings, number 33, and Mike Murphy, number 46, are now the running backs for Illinois. This is Brookings for about two to the seven-yard line. Tackle is made by Daryl Sims. 46-year-old Mike White sending the play right now to Eason. He doesn't make an exaggerated wig-wag system at all. No, it's almost like an umpire, on, or not an umpire, but a third base coach in baseball. Uh, you see him touching their body and stuff like that, and that's pretty much what Mike White does. A lot of coaches use hand signals and different things like that, but he doesn't use such deliberate signals. Alana, I need to get to the five for a first down. They've got the ball at the seven. Second down. The fake pitch, and Eason on the roll, but being chased by two men. Pulls up in the end zone. What a great defensive play. Intercepted by the Wisconsin Badgers. This is Art Price, number 28, a sophomore from Newport News, Virginia. The ball was kicked, and it was returned by Price, 23 yards. is to get Easton outside, break contain, and then if he, if he has the run, to make the run. I really feel that he was outside, could have picked up good yardage, and should not have thrown the football. He made a mistake, a bad decision, and we'll be back in a minute. Tomorrow there's more great boxing as former WBA lightweight champ Hilmer Kenny takes on Roberto Elizondo, and the scramble for a shot at Sugar Ray Leonard's title continues as Mauricio Bravo faces Pablo Baez. Be ringside tomorrow following a special edition of the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern on CBS Sports. A look at Art Price, who tipped off a deflected pass. The deflection was made by Matt Vandenboom, number 39, at the goal line. Wisconsin, two wide receivers, wide left side on first down 10. And off to the left side. Chucky Davis tries to skirt to the outside and picks up just a couple. Mike Weingrad, number 36, middle linebacker, makes the stop for Illinois. Arkansas leading Houston, as you saw, on that 92-yard pass interception return, 7-3 in one of our CBS games. It's live today. North Carolina State with an early lead over Clemson. That game in Raleigh today. Central Michigan and Kent State are scoreless currently. Ole Miss and Vanderbilt also scoreless. Another of our games on CBS, as are Jackson State and Grambling State. Second down and five. Randy Wright with a play fake. Pops it deep and one-on-one -on -one coverage. There is a flag again. The second time today on Charles Armstead at the 43. Michael Jones, the intended receiver, it'll be a first down Wisconsin. Well, we knew they were aggressive, but they are being overly aggressive, Dennis Franklin. And certainly uh, Charles Armstead, uh, number 43. He's their, he's their best man-to-man. -man. Hold on a second. He's their best man-to-man -man, uh, cover. And you'll see uh, him coming up. On the defender, he likes, you know, he has, he kind of itches for the ball. He likes to make those interceptions and come up quickly. And you can see here that he comes through the man over his back, and he can't do that. Mike White on the sideline. First and 10, Wisconsin. They lead 7 nothing with three and a half to go first quarter. They fake again from Randy Wright. He wants a punch this time. His receiver slip. It was intended for Al Toon, number 87. But Toon slipped as he made his cut at the 30-yard line. Randy Wright's stats for the day read three out of six. There's a look at Al Toon. Perhaps the best athlete on the Wisconsin team. He's also a track star, hurdler, triple jumper, long jumper, and he leaps seven feet high. The other great thing about uh, Wisconsin's offense in terms of their wide receivers, 
Wright can actually go back and read the coverages and throw to the open guy. He doesn't have a favorite. He doesn't have a particular uh, receiver that's any better than the other end. They're all good. Second down, 10. The 46 yard line. Into the flat it comes. John. David Keeling had it. And couldn't hang on. Keeling, they call him Flea. He's only 5'8", 154. This is a call at the line of scrimmage, Vern. Uh, Wright will come up, and when he sees that defensive back, you can see it in the picture. He'll, if the defensive back is back so far, he'll just come up, call that number, the audible, and get the ball out there as quickly as possible. And you can see by that camera angle that it was the right play to call. Nonetheless, incomplete, third down and 10. You audible that much under Bo? You ever change Bo Schembechler's calls? Uh, <laughs> directions, not plays. <laughs> Only did it once, huh? <laughs> Third down and ten. There's a flag offside. Right side, Illinois jump. And now it's a matter of whether or not they were drawn. That's Don Thorpe, number 96. Let's try Otho Courts again. Illegal procedure, Wisconsin. So indeed, the Illinois line was drawn offside. And then the Badgers five. Do enjoy their football here at Wisconsin. That ball, legal procedure, offense. Third down and 15. Wisconsin, two out of three on third down conversions. They lead it 7 0. A 10 play, 65 yard drive with the opening kickoff. And Gary Ellison got the touchdown from two yards out. Third and 15, ball at the Wisconsin 41 yard line. See if the Illini are coming. They've got six men up on the line. Wright changing at the line once again. They are not coming. Hand off to Chucky Davis. Takes one tackle. Gets split for a couple of rounds. He'll drop. Gets it to midfield and is knocked out of bounds at the Wisconsin bench at the Illinois 49-yard line. David Edwards forced him out of bounds, and that is not enough for the first down. Davis had a 78-yard run without a score last week against Michigan State. Uh, Mike Martin and Kirby Wilson go back. As you look at Chucky Davis on the Wisconsin bench, they will punt it for the second time today. George Winslow is back. Kirby Wilson and Mike Martin wait for it. Nice high deep kick. It may be a bit too much. Oh, look at this. Into the end zone, touchback. Heck of a kick. 48 yards. A hang time of 4.6. There's no win today. Remember we were talking to Tony Eason yesterday. He said, boy, the thing I most like is the absence of a breeze. Our score is 7-0. Coming up at the half, Brent Musburger and Eric Parsegian the scores and highlights of other games. And then something we've really been proud of at CBS and look forward to again today. Don Farrell. Great, great coach at Missouri. He still lives in Columbia. And he will be the feature on In Their Own Words. First down and 10 at the 20. DC with three receivers. Screen pass right side. Mike Murphy. Fullback. Room to rip. Breaks the tackle. First and 10 all the way out to the 36-yard line. Tim Drumrai ranged backwards to make the stop, but it's a 16-yard game to the running back. with his second catch today. Richard Riles comes in in his spot now. As you look at the 46-year-old former head coach of Cal in his third year at Illinois. First and 10 at the 37. Six. Drop play. Riles to the 40. Mark Shoemate, number 76, and Tim Crumlin, number 50, made the tackle. Look at Rick Schulte, number 58. Janata, 6'7", 260-pound senior, number 76 out of Nevada, Las Vegas. There's some size in that offensive line of Illinois. Second down and eight. Eason for the day is now five out of seven for 63 yards. And off to Joe Curtis, number 21, who is stopped. Darrell Sims, number 60, and Jim Nelka, number 33. I'm a bit surprised that uh, Wisconsin has reacted so well to uh, the running efforts of uh, the Illini offense. Uh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm convinced that they didn't realize or feel like uh, uh, Illinois was going to come out here and run as much as, as, as they are. And uh, they've held up. They're holding up quite well on the front. Illinois are two out of three on third down conversions. A rotating defensive secondary now for Wisconsin. He's got a man wide open. Caught at the 20. First and 10 inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. He was all by himself. It's the tight end, Tim Brewster. That's a game of 43. The advantage of Eason in being able to run around back there. Absolutely. He's a terrific uh, athlete. You can see here some great moves. He's looking around for everybody. He never panics. Keeps us cool, and then he finally finds his uh, tight end, number 81, Tim Brewster, right there. And the thing is, that had Easton seen him earlier, it would have been six points. Is that, Dennis, a case of a linebacker, perhaps, with responsibility on, on Brewster thinking, well, he's going to run it? Yes, absolutely. And Tony can run. Nobody ever gives him credit for it, but he can't run the football. Mike Murphy tries to run it this time and picks up a couple. 7-0, but the Illini are threatening. Jim Crumroy makes the tackle. 1.27 to go, first quarter. Dennis Franklin, Bert Lundquist, here with the NCAA on CBS, and there's the time remaining. A sellout crowd. Wisconsin scored on its first possession, and the Illini threatened once, but had a pass tipped by Matt Vandenboom, and intercepted by Art Price, who turned out to the 33-yard line. Second down, seven. Easton hands it off inside to Richard Riles, a junior out of San Jose, and he is jammed up to be third and three. Jim Melka, number 33, made the tackle. Uh, we thought we'd have a good one. We have. Absolutely. Had a shot there of Matt Vandenboom. Now we've got a Wisconsin player down at the 15-yard line. Looks like it might be. Well, let's wait. Let's, I think it's Mark Shoemate. This is a very important game for both of these ball clubs. Illinois has played one more than has uh, Wisconsin in the Big Ten. Illinois is at Iowa next week. Then they're a big one. They're at, they get Michigan at home and then at Indiana. Wisconsin will be at home at three out of their next four. Northwestern Indiana, the trip to Iowa, and then Minnesota. Now, the key for Wisconsin is that Michigan leads them with a 4-0 record. They need some help. For uh, Wisconsin to go to the Rose Bowl and win the championship, Michigan must lose twice. Here you can see how uh, the injury, 76 on the right of the screen, you can see him going down. Mark Shoemaker. Shoemake. And he will be walking off by himself, which is uh, a nice sign. Look at 44-year-old Dave McClain. Scott Bergold has a nice shot from our handheld camera in the end zone. Third down and three. Illinois has done a good job on third down conversion so far. One running back, three wide receivers, pitch out. Richard Wilde did not get it. Watch Jody O'Donnell and Mike Harrington, numbers 44 and 64, Dennis. And you can see him, you can see 44 right there in the center of your screen come up with a great pursuit and, and knocks down the interference, allowing the inside Wisconsin Badger defensive players to make the tackle. Kyle Borland also was there now. Mike Bass will try and get three. No, they're going to go for it on fourth down. They disdain the field goal, and they will go for the first down. Easton changing at the line. That's obvious. Fourth and one. We're in waiting to see. quarter while they measure look at this i really thought easton made a mistake here by not uh, calming down the crowd and uh letting his people uh, make sure that they can hear him and uh, just delaying but uh the play worked and they picked up the first down we'll be back in a moment the end of 15, the statistics fairly even. Illinois does have an edge in passing yards with 106, but that is negated by the one turnover of the game. They had a pass intercepted at their own goal line by Art Price. They did get the first down and goal. They've got a first and goal five yards away from tying it up. And 
what a great shot. The panorama of college football here at Camp Randall Stadium. Saturday's America. Double tight end, two running backs and one wide receiver. Wide to the left side. Leeson handoff to Dwight Beverly. Plowing with the left tackle and down to about the one and a half. Beverly, a junior college transfer out of Long Beach. Six foot, 200 pounder. Jim Melka and Matt Vandenboom made the tackle. There's a look at Chris Babiar, the best offensive lineman, a junior out of Bloomington, Illinois. Second down, goal from just inside the two. Oliver Williams is the lone wide receiver out of his screen on the left hand side. Beverly, touchdown. Flag is down also. Beverly is in. There was movement on the right side of the offensive line. And you just have to wait. If he stands, Beverly has his third touchdown of the day. Offensive line, it cost the Illini six. So wipe out the touchdown, mark off five yards, back to the seven. Here's the call. Dead ball, legal procedure, offense. Here comes Mitchell Brookins into the game. He's got seven touchdowns this year. And I'd look for him to carry the football if they run it. The other thing, uh, Byrne, the last two times they had a two tight end set up. They had Oliver Williams, number 17, flanked out by himself. He's a tremendous jumper. And you can look for them to maybe audible to him on that kind of alley-oop pass. They've got Brookins way out there this time, and Williams is wide to the right side. One running back. He's in the throw. Quarterback draw. He got the five back. He is knocked down at the two-yard line. Dennis, I don't know. Was it a design play, do you think? I want to tell you, he paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at it from ground level. You can take a look, and this is how it looks right down there where the action is. Watch the hole open up because they spread out the defenses. The, uh, the offense was a widespread. They spread out the defense, and uh, Tony saw the big opening, ran up the middle, and he was tackled here by Jody Lozano, number 44. Third down and goal from the two. Complete. Jim Milka was getting after Tony Eason. And they will not go for the touchdown on fourth down. They're bringing in Mike Bass. Terrific coverage, Dennis Franklin, by the Wisconsin defense. You're right, Byrne. But I, I really thought uh, Tony made the wrong decision again. Uh, he was outside, he broke contain. And uh, he's such a great passer, and he relies on that pass, and he thinks pass first instead of run. But uh, that's the second time in the ball game where he was outside, and I feel, I feel like he really could have scored the touchdown had he kept the ball in. Mike Bass is 13 of 15 for the year. He's missed his last two from 51 and 56, but he knocks this one home. And the Illini are on the board. Mike Bass with the field goal has shaved the margin to four points. Wisconsin leads it 7 to 3 with 13.33 to go in the first half. you heard on the pregame show the talks have recessed and so that uh, NFL Today show tomorrow will be interesting. Dick Buckus, Jim Brown, John Mackey, Dick Anderson, Joe Theismann, Richard Todd, and Joe Ferguson will join Brett Musburger in the studio. The NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern tomorrow on CBS Sports. Mike Bass, who just kicked the field goal to put Illinois on the board, will kick it off now. And the deep man for Wisconsin Badgers is Gary Ellison, number 41. A 12-play drive of 78 yards to 436, and Bass kicks it off from 19. This one will be returned. Ellison drops it out of the five. 10, 20, 24-yard line. And paid the price. The tackle is made by Craig Zerbel, a senior wearing number 32, and Ellison is down at the 24-yard line. It looked like he might have got the wind knocked out. Took a heck of a shot from Craig Zerbel, number 32. Watch it, Dennis. 
Well, ain't much you can say. Uh, Zerbo put his helmet right in there, made the tackle. You can see where his helmet went in. And uh, I would I would believe that uh, he got the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully, there's nothing more serious than that. Oh, he'll have a sore sternum tonight. There's no question about that. He's okay. Gary Ellerson, who has the Wisconsin touchdown. And he got it on the opening drive from two yards out. Mike Bass's 19-yard field goal has given us a 7-3 lead. 13-28 remaining in the first half of play. Wisconsin has won four in a row. The Illini coming off a defeat last week to Ohio State. And one of the four Wisconsin wins was at Columbus, 6-0. First and 10, Andy Wright, the quarterback, backs in the eye. Goes to Chucky Davis, number 23. Dave Gordon, the freshman tight end, number 80. And just beyond him is Mike White. Second and eight. Now Michael Jones and Dave Keeling will come in with the play selection. And the other two wide receivers, Strucka and Toon, lead. Dave McLean, 24, 25, and 2 here at Wisconsin. So he can even his record in his fifth year as head coach. Second down and eight. Randy Wright fakes the handoff and wants a line. Goes deep in the single coverage. Keeling can't make the fingertip catch. He let him uh, foot too much. And had him open with Armstead uh, covering. You can certainly see here it's a play action play of the fake to Chucky e. Davis, number 23 and 12. Gets back. Randy Wright sets up and throws the ball, but he leads his receiver, number 48. You'll see him come out of the left side of your pitcher, almost make a one-handed uh, catch, but uh, David Keeling, number 48 there, couldn't catch up to the ball. He was wide open. Third down and eight. Wisconsin two out of four on third down conversion. Third and three, I believe. Looks like Ken Gillen, number 87, came across the neutral zone. And Vern, this is one of the real keys to uh, why Randy White has done such a great job. Let's listen to the official. Oh, the legal procedure, they drew him offside. It'll be third and 13. Well, that's my error, but I thought uh, Randy White, what he was trying what he was trying to do was pull off the Illini defense. Here's the ball. ball. Legal, legal procedure. Offense. Hit Bob, you think? Well, no, he had two guys on the defense, but if you look to his left, number 72 uh, uh, for the offense went offside. Jeff Dellenbach, the sophomore out of Wausau. Third and 13. <laughs> Illinois has not blitzed as much as we thought they would in the early going. Five man front, linebackers showing a blitz look. They are not coming. There's Randy right on the roll. Pops it out to the Stocker. Stronka breaks the tackle. He's got the first down plus. First and 10 at the 40 yard line. 18 yard game. Mike Kevin, number nine, made the tackle. Stronka has his third catch of the first half. Okay, the key to this play, right, breaks contained, but you see Stronka, number 42 at the bottom of your screen. He's going to curl inside. Now watch him open up the zone because that wide man went inside. He threw the ball on the line, got it to Stronka, and he was one man. If he'd, have, if he'd have broke that tackle right there by number nine, he was gone. Stronka has uh, caught three, first and ten at the 40 yard line. Audible again at the line. Right, two-step drop. Flag is down as the pass is caught by Michael Jones, number 82. And the tackle made by Mike Evans. And let's hold everything. We've got a flag on the near side. Uh, we have had a few penalties. That's a motion call against Wisconsin. And wipes out a sizable game. That's the fifth penalty against Wisconsin for 25 yards. And Illinois has been penalized four times. Referee Oko Court. We got illegal motion on the offense. Al Toon and Tim Straka come back in. That means Keeling and Jones are on the bench. Interesting, we asked yesterday Dave McLean which receiver he would go to in a third down and eighth situation. He said any of them. That's right. Any of them. He's got, he's got no preference. First and 15 at the 35. Right takes the ball. He'll pull it and run it. Looks for a downfield block, does not get it, but he's up in the 42-yard line. Now for an NCAA Today report. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. 
Northern Arkansas opens up a little bit of daylight with this play. Brad Taylor, 56 yards, Derek Holloway, and now Arkansas over Houston 14-3. You were right about that Razorback defense. It's tough. Let's go back to Vern. Okay, Brad, and of course, Arkansas has a big one today against Houston. Then down the road on the 20th of November, they face SMU in Dallas. So that ought to be a key Southwest Conference game between those two top 10 teams. Second down and eight. a man in his face. Ken Gillen got back there and may have lost a tooth. <laughs> or else he just took the bridge and said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randy, you're, you're, they got a close-up. You're on camera. Put your teeth back in. <laughs> Smile and say hi, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if he played high school hockey. <laughs> down eight wisconsin leads it seven to three 11 29 to go a gorgeous day 46 degrees with no win and a sellout crowd here for a big 10 class Jeff Lamble stadium and the flag comes they roll it out of the play to continue Jeffy Davis. he's got the first down if the play stands up what a run by davis to the 33 now holds everything That's uh, why you changed the cadence. They give it to the big fullback, Gerald Green, surging up the middle of the 27. Dan Regas makes the tackle, number 92. Green is a senior from Waukegan, Illinois, and had come into the uh, game with 139 yards. Now Troy King comes into the backfield to join Darrell Green. He wears number 35. A handheld end zone view once again. Giving you some of the ground level perspective of the game. Second down, a long three. Wisconsin leads it seven to three. Troy King, first down from the line out 22. Regas and Craig Swope, numbers 92 and 12, got there, but not before Wisconsin moved the chains again. That'll fire up the crowd as if they needed any ignition. <laughs> And again, Wisconsin sticking to the game plan. I really feel that they're doing the right things. That, that offensively, they're making first downs, and uh, uh, they've had the luxury of scoring one touchdown already. But the key thing is to keep that football and keep your offense on the, on the field because the best defense is a good offense. Complete to Al Toon. That'll bring up a second down and ten. Toon could not hang on. Hit him right in the shoulder pads. Yeah, concentration is the key here. But right, once again, that was an audible. You can see the secondary backs off of Toon. He got the ball out in a hurry, but you got to concentrate because you can hear those footsteps of number 27 getting ready to make the pop on you, David Evans. Uh, you, you never had any receivers who heard footsteps. I never threw the ball. <laughs> Second down and ten. Look to the right side. Both wide receivers are out there. They're changing at the line again. Randy Wright is. Gets it to his fullback. Now it's a good hole. To the 19. It'll be third and about four. Craig Swope closed it with help from Ed Brady. Number 61. There's a look at the the only Wisconsin touchdown of the day. Watch this quick cut by number 41, uh, Gary Ellison. He cuts back inside, good effort, and a good call. And I think 
uh, what Wisconsin is doing. The previous play, if you remember, they threw that quick out pass. Well, the defense has got to respect that. They've got to think about moving to the outside, and they come back with the call up in the middle, and it works. Third and five. They're coming with the blitz. Right. In trouble. Blitz it out at the feet of Chucky Davis. Incomplete. There was the maximum blitz led by number 61, Ed Brady. It'll be fourth down. Look out. Here we come. The, the key to that, uh, that blitz by Illinois at that time was they didn't allow Randy White enough time to change the play at the line of scrimmage. So they disguised it to the very last moment, and then they brought it, and there was nothing he could do but eat the ball or try to get rid of it. Wendell Gladham, a junior out of Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, is two out of two for the year, and he will fly push the lead back to seven. The kick will come from the 26-yard line, and what an oddity, he gets it straight on. This is a throwback to up. Now he's a soccer style. Kick by Gladham. No good. No good. He missed it from 36. He's two of three for the year. So the Illini defense is held. We've got nine minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half. Wisconsin has yielded the ball. They lead 7-3. 4 to go first half, 7 to 3. Wisconsin has the lead. A sellout crowd at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. No crowd count yet, but it'll be close to 78,000, if not more than that. I'm Bern Lundquist, along with former Michigan quarterback Dennis Franklin, and we're glad you're with us here. NCAA football, live on CBS. First down, 10. Tony Eason has his back split behind him. The Illini trail, 7 to 3. Eason with the draw play. Left side, he goes to Richard Riles, and he rips it up the middle of the 30-yard line. He'll be just short of the first down. Kyle Borland, number 32, made the tackle. As Riles, a junior college transfer out of San Jose, actually leading the club in rushing with 209 yards for the year. Second down and one. Riles runs at 9-400. Big Ten career passing leaders. Tony Eason coming up on the list. Up. Uh, will run and get the first down to the 31 yard line. Brad Grabo, a sophomore wearing number 96, made the tackle. Saw you talking to Mike White yesterday about the tackle. He's really a terrific uh, passing or quarterback coach, isn't he, Dennis? No question about it. Uh, a very in innovative mind. Uh, his passing scheme is a lot like that of Bill Walsh's uh, from uh, San Francisco. Uh, he had some experiences with uh, Coach Walsh and uh, he's going to see some great passing this afternoon by uh, the Illinois offense, I'm sure. Here's the first and 10 throw, if Eason has time. Watch him run. Boy, he's got great athletic ability. Now he lost it deep and finds Mike Martin at the 50. First down at the 48. Martin, the senior out of Washington, D.C., for the second time today, has converted a broken play into a first down and 10. That's a gain of 21. You can see Martin at the bottom of the screen. Watch him run around, and when, when his quarterback gets in trouble is the key. He puts his hand up. He's trying to let his quarterback know. Now, Eason is moving to the right side of the field, so Martin moves the same way, which is a key thing to do. You've got to follow that quarterback and make it easy for him to see you along with throw the ball team. Screen pass. Richard Wilde, number 13, picks up just six feet. Tackle made by the linebacker, Jim Milka, number 33, for Wisconsin. Looks like kind of a ragged screen pass in its development. Very slow in developing. 7.20 to go first half. 7-3, Wisconsin took the opening kickoff, drove 65 yards in 10 plays, got a touchdown from Gary Ellis in Illinois, came back, had a pass intercepted at the goal line, and then had a first down and goal from the five, but they had to settle for a field goal, and that's where we stand right now, 7-3, as Wisconsin missed a field goal opportunity. Now the audible at the line on second and seven, he's to throw. He's got a man way down at the sideline, at the 10, the five, and down at the one-yard line, Kirby Wilson out of Los Angeles. Number 20, a 44-yard game. Oh, he was so open down the left side. This is something you can't teach. It's a great play by Tony Eason. Watch him come back, and he's trying to get the ball off to his running back. Right here in the flat. He sees the linebacker, 33. You can barely see him in the picture. Was covering that... that, uh, that 
offensive back. So then he looked for another receiver. He found his man, Kirby Wilson, wide open, and he had a strong enough arm to get it to him. I'm telling you, he read that play as it happened, and it was just a terrific play by Tony Eason. First and goal from the two. Did he get in? Lost the yard. Thomas Rooks, the freshman wearing number 42, the ball carrier. The Illini with a chance to go on top for the first time with 6.14 to go in the first half. They trail 7-3. Easton now is 9 out of 12 for 174 yards. And many of his long gainers, Dennis Franklin, have come on those broken plays. Absolutely. And he's, uh, he's as cool as they come back there. He really doesn't seem to feel the pressure if there is such a thing to him. In the eye with two tight ends. Now the audible. Play is stopped at the one. There may have been, may have been, motion in the offensive backfield. Penalties have hurt Illinois again today as they have throughout the year. One, I can take it back five. Easton, Now well, you can hear Otho Courts, number 42, move before the set. Thomas Brooks. with uh, Wisconsin now, third and one, or second and six or seven. And they'll take the penalty. Here's the call from Motho Courts. Motion. Second down. I don't know that Illinois wouldn't rather have a second down than <laughs> seven. <laughs> Penalties for the day, a total of nine. to the right side. Easton with very little pressure into the flat. It goes to Richard Lyles. Fights his way inside the five and will be knocked down at the four. Jim Brumrai, number 50, made the stop. It'll be third and goal. See if you can see now as uh, Mike White wiggles the play in. He does it very subtly. Well, he's going to run this one in. Make sure the communication is not uh, not hampered. Defensive changes being made by Wisconsin. Third and goal from the four. Illinois is three out of six on third down conversion. Williams is wide left and a wing to the right side. Split backs behind Tony Eason. As he, as he came out of center, he tripped. It was a fade pass to Oliver Williams, but Eason had almost no chance at all because he tripped from the snap. This is another audible, and as Tony Eason tries to get out here, for some reason he uh, loses his footing. You can see him going down there, but he still thinks quickly enough to try to get the ball away to 17, Oliver Williams, and it almost worked. Almost worked. Mike Bass for the second time today. This one, a 21-yard field goal. Jim Cameron will hold it. The kick is up, and it is good. Bass is two for two. So Mike Bass is now 15 out of 17 for the year. Wisconsin's lead has been shaved to only one point. 76-yard drive in nine plays. Took only two and a half, and Mike Bass offers his second field goal of the first half. So Illinois has cut the lead to 7-6, to six and Mike Bass will kick it off. Gary Ellison at the 5. 20, out to the 24-yard line. That 70-yard drive was set up by a scramble pass. Let's take a look again as Tony Eason goes deep to Kirby Wilson. Okay, watch number uh, 33, Jim Milka, because when Tony Eason goes back to throw the ball here, he will read this linebacker, 33. Now, he's going out. He's going to throw, initially throw the ball to his running back. See him look? Now, he changes because he can see the linebacker. Now, he's going to go to his second receiver, and that is uh, Kirby Wilson, number 20, who's wide open. Just a great play by Tony Eason. That set up the field goal that has cut the margin to what you see right there. 7 to 6 with 428 to go first half. First down 10. Wisconsin has the ball at their own 24. It goes to the fullback, Gerald Green. 
Cuts it up to a couple near the 28-yard line. Green has now carried four times for 22 yards. Chucky Davis is the leading ground gainer for Wisconsin, and he's got 33. Big Ten clash. Mike White and Dave McLean matching wits. Two outstanding college coaches. Second down and five. Ball just short of the 30. Randy Wright is changing at the line once again. Good job. Jackie Davis coming left. Nobody there. Goes to his right. Caught for a loss. Buckus, number 53. Familiar name? Yep. He's a nephew of Dick. Junior out of Lansing, Illinois, made the tackle. 6'4", 260 pounds. Do they look alike? Dick and Mark. <laughs> Every Buckus I know is looked alike. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I'm not going to tease him. I wouldn't either. <laughs> Third down and ten. Right maybe changing one more. Going deep for Al Toon and overshoots and he had him open for the 50-yard line. They got that man-for-man -man coverage deep that they wanted. And Toon had the angle, but Randy Wright led him by too much. And it'll be fourth down. The Illini will get the ball back with less than three minutes remaining in the first half. George Winslow on the punt. Randy Wright is now five out of 14 for 76 yards. Vern, I think Wisconsin's got to go back and stay with those consistent things they get first downs for them. They can't, they can't afford to just come out and go for the big one because when they turn the ball over, they give the ball back to Eastern, and that's a threat to them. Half and a kick by Winslow. Kirby Wilson and Mike Martin wait for it, but there's a mix-up, and Wilson finally makes the grab, and he is down immediately at the 25-yard line. A 42-yard kick with a hang time of only 3.2 seconds, nonetheless effective. Illinois has the ball back with 2.47 to go in the half. Coming up at halftime, we'll return to our New York studio for the NCAA Today. Brent and Arrow with scores and highlights, plus in their own words, Today featuring former Missouri coach Don Furrow. That's all coming up at halftime on CBS Sports. There's a look at Mark Butkus. Uh, he looks like Dick, doesn't he? Give him a, give him a mustache and a commercial and he'll be all right. <laughs> First down and 10. He's in the throw. Into the flat it comes. Caught at the 45 yard line by Joe Curtis, the running back. And that is not, well, it may be enough for a first down at the 46. Back in the 60s, Dennis, I was at a Chicago Bear Dallas Cowboy football game where Dick Butchers got into a fight with offensive guard John Wilbur. And Wilbur took his helmet off. And I was standing next to Don Meredith on the sideline, and Meredith looked out. He said, Now that may be the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so, first of all, to pick a fight with Butchers and, and then, then to take, take his helmet, helmet off. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see if they got the first down. Tony Easton is up there to check it out. Enough? Yes. By a smidgen, which is not much. So the Illini keep the drive going. Tony Easton, who was an option quarterback in high school and in junior college. And the only scholarship offer he had was from Mike White at the University of Illinois. Only major scholarship offer said he would have gone to the University of California at Davis had he not been invited to come play football at Illinois. That's good, down to the 40-yard line. Tim Brewster, the tight end, number 81, is tackled by Kyle Borland, but this is what you spoke about giving Illinois the ball back with three minutes remaining. Precisely. That's why the Wisconsin offense was key today to uh, get it, get themselves in a situation where they hold on to the ball and keep it away from Tony Easton. But I think the most encouraging thing you said on that last play was the fact that Easton came from an option-type program before he came here. There's hope for all of us. You know? <laughs> Easton to throw again. Screen pass left side. Blocked by Richard Wild. Grabbed up by Jim Melton. Uh, Fumble, but it came after the ball had been down. Lyles made the grab, and Melka was right there to collapse on him. 
Yeah, I saw you discussing the passing velocity <laughs> with, with White. It was, there was a glitter in your eye yesterday. Yeah, it was uh, excitement at its best. There what I, I might have been, huh? Yeah, yeah. Second down and 10, 76. Illinois clearing this time. One running back, three wide receivers, and he's in the throw. In the 31-yard line, short of the first down, the catch made by Joe Curtis out of the backfield. The tackle made by Brad Grabo. And the clock keeps running with 1.10 to go. See if Illinois uses the timeout. They have. They have called time. Well, he has been an impressive young man, has he not, in the first half? He's thrown now 14 out of 18 for 209 yards. The 16th time in succession. I know he can make a bruise. I know he can make a first down. situation which is what you got to do how much time is on the clock and i believe he said go to your x man which is just split in well we talked about mike white's uh, capacity for coaching quarterbacks those are a, that's a list it's a some of the men whose lives he has touched craig morton jim plunkett bargowski rich campbell Ferragamo, dave wilson the late joe roth and mike gorilla that's a hall of fame right in itself no question about it and i asked mike white what made uh uh, Tony totally Easton different or as good as any of these guys. He said he thought he was the best athlete of all of those players. This is quite a statement. Third and two. Good job. They've got the first down plus. And they also fill the clock as Lyles fights his way inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. He blocked from Steve Collier, a junior out of Chicago. You just saw him. And Brad Grable made the tackle. Well, I think the Wisconsin defense expected a pass, and they kind of switched up. Uh, we thought up here that he was going to his X-Man, but uh, apparently they didn't do that. So uh, they go to Riles outside, and he makes a great effort and gets out of bounds. A good call. Brad Grabo, who made the tackle, was injured on the play after that gain of 14 yards and will receive assistance as he heads to the bench. Tom Booker has taken his place, number 97. We've got a report for you as soon as possible. A giant football. They have their front here in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> Maybe a potential Tony Easton as a stance <laughs> batting that thing around. <laughs> first down and 10 with 102 to go in the first half. Illinois has trailed throughout. Oh, they read that screen well, but Lyles makes the catch, then bounces off a tackle and is finally down. At about the 17 by Jody O'Donnell, number 44. Linebacker really had good coverage on that play. Excellent coverage, but uh, Eason, for some reason, anticipated it and threw it high enough and beyond the linebacker to complete it to Ryan. Second down. Catch is made at the nine-yard line by the tight end, Tim Brewster. He's a walk-on from Newark, New Jersey. A senior who had 24 receptions coming into the game. And now a timeout has been called by Illinois once again. He did not pick up the first down. They've got the ball at the nine. And so Eason and Mike White will talk about it again. 27 seconds to go in the half. And a quick recap for you. Wisconsin went 65 yards with the opening kickoff. Ellison got the touchdown from two. Illinois came fighting back as you look at Dave McClain. They had a chance to go on top or tie up the game, rather, but a pass was intercepted by Art Price at the goal line. Then they settled for a field goal from Mike Bass to shave the margin to 7-3. To and just recently, they got another field goal from Mike Bass to cut it to 7-6 to and sandwiched in between. There was a missed field goal by Wendell Gladham of Wisconsin. 7-6, to six, our score. You know, Vern, I like... Uh... I like Oliver Williams in this situation. If they can get him put in another one-on-one -on -one situation where it's man-to-man, uh, -man, uh, his jumping ability, he's a, he's a wide receiver who's 6'3", 195 pounds out of California, and he can really jump. Uh, uh, he's set records and tracks for his great leaping ability. 
And in a situation like this, third down with 27 seconds left, you figure if I can't complete it, it's a safe pass, I'll just come back and hit the field goal. Well, you saw Williams break to the left side, which is the short side of the field. Mike Martin is wide right. And Tony Eason can't hear the snap count. That'll only inspire the crowd. That's the right thing, though. Never had that problem in Columbus, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, never. <laughs> it's a sellout. And they are averaging 76,000 per game here this year. Third and one. Time remaining 27 seconds. Williams goes left again. Joe Curtis and Mike Martin both come wide right. Quarterback Cooper, and Eason gets it down near the seven. That's going to be close. Illinois has one timeout left. It'll be fourth down if he didn't get it, but the indications are from the Illini that they did indeed get the first down. Down. That ball foul. Didn't see the play. And that will make it a first and goal from inside the five. Here's both on close. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. Uh, we're going to wind the clock. 22 seconds to go in the first half. Williams goes to the left again. So does Brewster. Curtis and Martin come right. Illinois recovers, but they may have to waste their final timeout. Four seconds, five seconds remaining on the clock. Daryl Sims, number 60, knocked the car out of Tony Eason and forced the fumble back at the 11. And they will bring on the field goal unit. Take a look at Daryl Sims from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And what happens here, Eason never saw Daryl Sims, number 60. He'll come in on the left side of your pitcher and just lay it to uh, Tony Eason. But he never saw him. And uh, they're lucky to get the ball back, Illinois, that is. You can see the hit right there. The number 76, the offensive uh, lineman, uh, John uh, Kenochu, made the recovery. That's why, Vern, I thought that if they're going to throw a pass down here, you got to throw a quick pass, a quick safe pass. you got to come back and get rid of it because you don't have a lot of time, number one. And number two, you can't risk turning the football over in a situation like this. Mike Bass is two for two today. The barefoot kid, whose dad is the defensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers. Tim them in the hole. He did not get it. Two for two. Coming into that effort, but he missed it. Looks like he hooked it wide to the left. And both the Illinois and Wisconsin teams head up the tunnel for the halftime lecture. 7-6 ball game. Wisconsin came in, and they were underdogs by a couple. But their game plan called for them, Dennis, to take that ball and control it. They did on the opening series. They've gotten a little bit away from that uh, in recent possession. Yeah, late, uh, late in the second quarter, they sort of uh, went away from it, and they started trying to get the big plays. And they, they can't afford to do that uh, because the whole thinking is that if Wisconsin can sustain a drive, that Easton is not on the field. And it's, uh, it's the old theory, the best, uh, a good offense is a, is a great defense, and uh, they want to keep their team on the field as much as possible. It's halftime, and we'll be back with halftime activities after a message about an upcoming show on CBS and a word from your local station. Hey, Chevrolet, who invites you to take charge of a new Chevrolet car or truck at your Chevrolet dealers now. IBM. And by improved Press Tone 2 antifreeze, it locks out rust and corrosion. We're back 
left in the second half for Lundquist. Dennis Franklin, Wisconsin leading Illinois, seven to six for a sellout crowd here at Camp Randall Stadium. And before the game is over, as well as on every CBS NCAA football telecast this season, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet players of the game from each competing team. Chevy donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each player's school to assist qualified students in all chosen academic disciplines. This is the 12th year of the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, and we at CBS Sports are delighted to be part of such a beneficial activity. We've got a lot of candidates right now, and certainly no decision, and the temperature has warmed up five degrees. The humidity has dropped since we came on the air, and the wind, only three miles per hour, faster than it was at the outset. Mike White on the sideline. Dave McClain, his counterpart at Wisconsin. 7 to 6 with 30 minutes of football remaining in a key Big Ten conference encounter. Illinois will receive to open the third quarter. As a look at Dave McClain, 44 year old head coach. After seven years at Ball State, guided Wisconsin to its first bowl appearance in 62 last year. They played Tennessee in the Garden State Bowl. Thomas Rooks is the deep man. And here's the kick by Wendell Bradham, number six. This one sits there nearly top of the end zone. That does. Rooks drops to one knee. The Illini will have the ball first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Ball Tony Easton comes back in at quarterback. He'll have Joe Curtis and Mike Murphy in the backfield with him. Mike Martin, Oliver Williams, the wide receivers. Eason for the first half, 16 of 20 for 216 yards, one interception, but he has not thrown a touchdown, and he's been trapped three times for minus 14. One running back, three wide receivers. Martin is in the slot to the left side. Handoff goes up the middle. Richard Riles fights for yardage. Let's take a look at the starting lineup again. Eason, Curtis, Murphy, Mike Martin, and Kirby Wilson at the so-called skill positions. The offensive line, the tight end is Tim Brewster, John Janata, Rick Schulte, Mark Kelly, Chris Baviar, and Jim Juriga. That's a gain of five. It'll be second down, or gain of four, rather, second down and six. 16 consecutive games. Eason has been over 300, 200 yards. Screen pass, left side, Richard Ryan. Gets a block, gets another. He's got the first down plus nine yards. He's out to the 39-yard line. Clint Sims, number nine, made the tackle, but that's a gain of 15. Defensively for Wisconsin, Daryl Sims, Crumry, and Shoemate, the front three. Kyle Borland, Jody O'Donnell, Jim Melka, and Brad Grabo. And that group complemented by Brian Morrow, Rich Baxter, Dave Greenwood, and Matt Vandenboom. Those safeties are outstanding. Greenwood and Vandenboom. First and 10, Illinois at their own 39-yard line. The audible at the line. And he's in the Diving try on the left side from Kirby Wilson, but he couldn't quite get high enough. And Wilson may have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Boy, it looks like he took off the trampoline, Dennis. But what a terrific effort. Uh by Wilson on the sideline. This play is a seam play. You send the tight end straight down the middle and your two wide outs down. And if you get a zone coverage, you try to throw in between the zone people. You can see here, he just beat uh, number nine, Oliver, on the corner. But the other court, the other safety man was coming over. And, and, and what Easton is trying to do is throw the ball in that hole. Kirby Wilson limping as he heads to the bench. May have hurt his back. Second down, 10. Opening minute, third quarter from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. Again, the three wide receiver set. Richard Riles moves over to his left now as Eason changes at the line of scrimmage. Stunning defensively, and there's a perfect pass that's intercepted. Oh, drop. In and out of the arms of Tim Brewster, the tight end. Kirby Wilson on the sideline. And it's for Brewster. Wrenched his back, stung his back. Certainly fell on it when he made that leaping attempt. And he is in some pain. Third and ten. 
Illinois, five out of eight on third down conversions. Double coverage, deep, ball hangs up, picked off. Intercepted by Wisconsin, John Joston, a senior out of Palatine, Illinois. Joston got there first. Second time today that Tony Eason has been picked off. 13-44 remaining third quarter. Wisconsin has the ball. Here you'll see Tony Eason looking deep for the touchdown pass. And the thing here, I thought, that he let his uh, receiver get too deep. He threw the ball as far as he could. But uh, Jolston, number 13, will come into your pitcher and make a great interception. The ball was underthrown because Jolston was inside of the, uh, of the receiver. The intended receiver was behind him. So that's an indication that the ball was thrown short. short. As a sophomore, John Jolston is the starting quarterback here. He's yielded that position to Randy Wright. Randy is in the cockpit now with a first down 10 at the 15-yard line. Chucky Davis weaves his way through for about four. Terry Cole and Mike Weingrad made the tackle. Offensively for Wisconsin, Randy Wright is the quarterback. Chucky Davis and Gerald Green, the running backs. Tim Straka and Al Toon, the starting wide receivers. Jeff Nolf, the tight end. Bob Winkler, Mark Subak, who's having his birthday today. He's 21, the left guard. Ron Versnick, Jeff Dellenbach, and Kevin Belcher, the right tackle. Chucky Davis. Second down and six. And again, right changing in the line. Davis in the cutback play. Watch him run. Great move. He's got two men to beat still. And is finally knocked out of bounds at the Illinois 45. Davis, the junior out of Macon, Georgia. And it's a second down call. Wisconsin coming out thinking that they still have to run the ball. There's a great move by 23, Chucky Davis. He's a four or five sprinter. Now, what's the move right there? He kicked inside and then he went back outside. And uh, that's what set up the long run. Uh, number 43, Charles Armstead thought he was going to go back inside and set up the outside cut. This is the run by Gerald Green, the fullback, as they give Davis a rest and he plunges over center. Dan Griegas makes the tackle. Chucky Davis with that 78-yard run last week and 36 on the last effort. He's now got 68 yards for the day. 236 yards on the season coming in. Now, Wisconsin, with the, the success they've had so far coming out in the second half, the uh, play-action pass is really set up, so I wouldn't be surprised if you go to something like that right here. but they pass nonetheless and it's caught by Keeling. He's got a first down to the 33. Charlie Armstead, number 43, made the tackle, but David Keeling, a sophomore from Cincinnati, the flea has made the catch. That's his second of the day. Now Al Toon and Tim Straka come in, so also to Troy King and Gerald Green. Four substitutions for Wisconsin. First and 10, Badgers at the Illinois 34. 12.04 remaining ten, third quarter. Go! Wisconsin leading 7 to 6. 10, 10, go! Get the fullback, Green. Not much there this time. Tackle made by Pete Burgard, number 31, a senior out of Ypsilanti, Michigan. End zone view with a field house in the background. Camp Randall was the site of a Civil War camp back 115 years ago. Stadium construction began in 1917, most recent expansion in 66. Second down. Bowback, Green, may have enough for another movement of the chain. Mike Weingrad saved about 10 more. 
The quick opener to the fullback, Gerald Green. You can see a good cut by Green here, who gets the ball. Now watch the offensive line surgeon. He cuts inside and actually fell down, or he could have gotten a lot more uh, yardage. Vern, this, this drive is a lot like the first drive of the football game. This kind of received the football and went all the way down the field. Third and one, Green did not get the first down. Double tight end set. Brett Pearson joins Jeff Nolan. Green again, he didn't get it. Went south, he was supposed to go north. Don Thorpe, number 96, led the defensive charge. And now for an NCAA Today report. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Vern, Penn State with the ball. Watch the wing back. John Williams now for the Nittany Lions. Kurt Warner will give it to him. And on the reverse, they'll score against West Virginia. Penn State now leading. And the score of the Penn State game is 10 to nothing. Let's go back to Vern Lundquist. Okay, Brad, Penn State on top of West Virginia. We've got Wisconsin leading right here on fourth down. Now go for it. Chuck Davis, he may score. Sports Sunday has great boxing and more. Beside Hilmer Ketty versus Roberto Elizondo, you'll see the former U.S. gymnastics champion, Jim Hartung and Peter Zitmar at the U.S. men's championships. And John Madden continues his coverage of the great pool shootout of 1982. It's all tomorrow following a special edition of the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Sunday. Well, we've got the official crowd count, 78,406. by Mike Martin at the 27, and we're going to get a personal foul called on Clint Sims, I think, number nine. Martin caught 12, which is a school record last week in the loss to Ohio State. Take a look at it. You can see here the catch, but watch number nine come in late in the sideline and uh, kind of jump on. That's not a very smart thing to do, particularly with your team leading. Borland made the tackle. Clint Sims with a personal foul. They'll tack on 15. Sims, a senior out of East St. Louis, Illinois. Mike Martin for the day has now caught. Here's the call. Defense. 
we are either having a problem with the mic or Opa Quartz has a mouthful of two in the back. Well, I'm not sure which. Looks like Harvey Key. <laughs> First down and 10. Illinois trailing by seven. Blitz coming. Easton throws it out, beats the blitz. Catch is made left side. White Beverly, the running back, number 26. And they rule, I believe, that his knee may have touched the ground at the 49. Beverly, a junior out of Long Beach. Eason, we talked about the number of consecutive 200-yard games he has thrown. He has thrown for better than 300 yards nine times. It's second down and three at midfield. 13 to six, Illinois Trail. Audible the line. Stunning. Eason pulls up, wide open. That's Dwight Beverly. Swivels his way for a first and ten at the 26-yard line. John Joston finally made the tackle, a gain of 25. There's another uh, key play set up by uh, Eason, but what you're going to see is Dwight Beverly, 26, come across the middle. He's wide open. And then watch that move right there on 44, a cutback, and you can kind of feel that. As a runner, you can feel uh, the pressure from the secondary, and he felt it, made a good move, picked up the first down for the Illini. At 27, 13 to 6, with 8.24 to go third quarter, the audible at the line again brings Martin as the inside man. Little pop into the flat to Richard Ryle. And he scoots it down the 20-yard line. Got a downfield block from Mike Martin. And blocks from Jim Milker, or tackles rather, and Richard Johnson, the linebacker and the uh, cornerback. Riles has not played that much this year, but we were told last night they really like him and they wanted to get him into the action today. That's true. Uh, uh, Illinois has got an abundance of uh, good, short, fast, compact uh, running backs. He can also catch the football, and uh, they're going to be tough. Second and five. Eason in between two men, and Oliver Williams can't get high enough. He's a leaper, but that was a little too high. Dangerous pass from Tony Eason. Because Williams was sandwiched by two defensive backs from Wisconsin. That brings up a third down and five. And again, Illinois has been in this position many times today. Yeah, they've moved the football, and then they get themselves in this kind of situation, third and five. And uh, they've come up short quite a few times, but uh, let's see what happens here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run some kind of draw play. Nope, he'll throw it. Man is open. Caught, first down, Oliver Williams at the 13-yard line. Vaughn Thomas defending, but Eason found the open man, and they'll move the chain south. Oliver Williams, a senior, had 86 yards in catches last year in this game, which Illinois won 23 to 21. Dave McLean prowling the sideline, 44-year-old head coach at Wisconsin. by the tight end. Looks like they were trying a tight end screen to Tim Brewster. But it was diagnosed very well by Wisconsin. Well, part of that problem is that uh, Wisconsin defensively, their concept of, of trying of trying to de defend uh, Eason is just kind of lay back. They think that they can uh, uh, control what he does in the secondary by changing coverages. Uh, you, you see pressure here by number 50, uh, Promerai, but uh, the rest of the secondary and the linebackers never uh, fit on the uh, screenplay, so it wasn't successful. Oliver Williams in motion wide left. Eason with a half roll. Pulls up, difficult pass to throw. Goes into the end zone and picked away and almost picked off. John Joston again, number 13. He's got one interception today. They were going for a leaping Oliver Williams. But then, as you can really appreciate how difficult that pass is to throw. Oh, it's a tremendously difficult pass to throw. And I got a lot of respect for Tony Easton. But I, I, I just can't agree with a decision like this. You're down near your own end zone, and you don't force the play. He forces the pass here and almost comes up with another interception. It doesn't make sense. 
That brings up a third down and 10. Mike White concerned. Illinois, six out of 10 on third down conversion. They'll spread them around. They trail by seven. Nobody open. Easton has to freelance. Drop. Fourth and 10. It has been a cause of continuing concern at Illinois. This inability to convert third down play. Wisconsin has held tight, and Mike Bass is on for the fourth time today. He's two out of three. This kick will be from 30 yards. He is already the leading scorer, kicking. Here's the kick in a single season. This one is good. He's closing in on the record held by Dan Beaver. Mike Bass has shaved the margin once again. We've got 6.31 remaining third quarter. Wisconsin leads Illinois 13 to 9. Dick Butkus, Jim Brown in the studio with Brett and also John Mackey, Dick Anderson, Joe Theismann, Richard Todd, and Joe Ferguson. You know they'll be talking about the decision today that you heard about on the NCAA today to recess the strikes indefinitely. That's on a special edition of the NFL Today tomorrow. Mike White, three field goals out of Mike Bass for the Illinois team, 67 yards. They've got the offensive stats. They've got 347 yards of total offense now, but they don't have the lead. Here's Bass with a kick. Thomas Brooks, or Ellison rather, I beg your pardon. And he punches it all the way out near the 33-yard line, a 31-yard kick return. Vince Osby knocked him out of bounds, number 23, with help from Mike Murphy. And there is a player down for Illinois back at the 14. Look at Gary Ellerson, who had the touchdown. He and Chucky Davis have the two TDs for Wisconsin. Joe Miles, number 35, is the injured Illini player. Kicking team declined. against the kicking team decline. And Tony Easton on the headset now talking to the coaches in the press box. He's a good-looking kid, isn't he, Dennis? Yeah, he is, uh, Vern. And uh, he's probably uh, talking uh, upstairs. Just wanted to check with the coaches, make sure he's reading the coverages right, and uh, perhaps they might come back and uh, tell him where there's another uh, a hole or something. We have a crowd of 78,000 plus. We are live on CBS, Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Illinois versus Wisconsin. With Dennis Franklin, the former Michigan quarterback, on Vern Lundquist. 13 to 9, Wisconsin has the lead of the ball at the 31 yard line. And off to the lead man, Chucky Davis. This time, the hole closed quickly by the Illini. Joe Miles with the injured player, but apparently nothing serious. Wisconsin has had a couple of defensive linemen go down already today Grabo and Shoemate. To look at Steve Collier, number 67 for Illinois told a great story about him. He was so big when he came out here, they didn't have a pair of pants, yes. but he wore his blue jeans <laughs> in practice. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Second down and nine. 13 to nine, Wisconsin leads. Motion from Keeling, and off inside. Flag is down to the far side of the field. Gerald Green with the carry, but it may be negated. Let's look at Steve Collier. Now, he's not wearing blue jeans now, but when he first reported, He's a big one. He's 6'7", about 260. And they said he was so big. <laughs> How big was he? That they couldn't find a pair of pants to fit him. So he worked the blue jeans. Illegal shift on the offense. Decline. And the declining of the penalty brings up a third down. And six for Wisconsin. Al Toon and uh, Tim Straka come in. I'm not so sure I'd uh, decline that penalty. See the note on Wisconsin? They've only given the ball up on couples twice all year. 36. Right, good block. Has a man open. Struck in his fourth catch today. And struck a gives Wisconsin a first down at the 46. Charles Armstead made the tackle, but they'll move the chain again. This could be a pick, which uh, I don't believe is e uh, illegal. 
But uh, you see Straka come in here, and the lower man, 27, was trying to wipe off the defender, which he did, and uh, the receiver comes open, 42 Straka right there, and they pick up the first down. First down and 10, 13 to 9, with 5.06 to go, third quarter. Step drop, nobody open. Now they have three laps, and it is almost picked off. Mike Heaven, number nine, who has three interceptions for the year. Illinois has picked off 15 passes this season, but they do not have one today. Well, I think what happened on that play, Vern, was uh, we got the audible from Wright to his wideout, and what he wanted him to do was go down and fake that uh, little hitch pass that they've been throwing in front of the defenders all day, hoping that uh, the defender would bite and he'd have a wide open uh, six points for the touchdown, and it just didn't work out. It was a good call, though. Second down, 10. Wide is 7 out of 17. They give it to the fullback, Green. Green breaks a tackle, breaks another. Fights for yardage down to the 46. Mike Johnson, number 85. And Ed Brady, number 61, finally got him down. And that'll be short of the first down. It'll be third and one, third and two. You know, Green, for a big guy, six feet, uh, 235 pounds, he really has got great agility. You can see here, there's nothing. Looks like nothing. Watch the cutback. That's what made the play. He waited, he waited for his line to open up, and now he just uh, uses his great strength to pick up uh, more yards. The cutback was easy. Third and two for one of the few times today. And Wright will throw it. Into the flat it comes. Caught. Al Coon. He's got great speed. Touchdown, it's 19 to 9, Wisconsin. And Wendell Gladham on to try the extra point. That is Toon's first catch today. You see Toon in man to man or in, in motion. He's got man to man coverage in the secondary, and he goes out on a quick out. And Stratka, who's out there, you see him come inside. This man had to come all the way across the field to cover two. And he missed the tackle, and that let him just run with his great speed. And it was a six point and a great design play. Wisconsin counters the field goal for Mike Bass with a 46-yard touchdown toss. Randy Wright to Al Toon. Wendell Gladham with a kick, and the Wisconsin lead has been increased to 20 to 9. It took 227. Scoring drive, 69 yards. And there's a look at uh, a guy who's got a couple of nicknames. One coach calls him Car Tune. Looney Tune is the <laughs> other one. I think that's clever. <laughs> Al Toon, D-O-O-N. It is Graham to coach. This one should be returned. He looks at the goal line. The first one from St. Louis. Walker, number two, let the special team charge downfield. Let's look at that third down and two play for the touchdown again. Okay, you see Toon coming across. Uh, you missed that part of it, but the quick pass, you can see Straka inside, and 42 had to make the tackle because they were in man-to-man -man coverage. He couldn't do it, and uh, Toon just simply outran everybody, but it was a well-designed uh, uh, play because of the situation and the, and, and the secondary coverage that Illinois was in. and the Illini at their own 17. Handball. Right Beverly going left. Two yards. Mark Shumate, who was injured early in the first half, is back in there. Number 76, and he made the tackle. Pitt leading Syracuse 7-0 at the half. Struggle there. Arkansas in the second quarter by 25 over Houston. 
Cincinnati and Alabama. It's seven zip Crimson Tide in the first quarter of play. And Penn State, you saw the highlight earlier from Brent Musburger. They lead West Virginia 10 0. Second down and nine, Illinois. Audible again at the line. Stunning by Wisconsin. He's a man open. Tim Brewster is tight end. First down, all the way out to the 38 yard line. John Jostin made the tackle as Brewster gets the first down. Clemson leading North Carolina State by 15 in the third quarter. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, what a matchup that's going to be with Ernest Anderson and Marcus Dupree at Norman this afternoon. Michigan leading Northwestern 21-0 uh, Big Ten score, which brings a smile to Dennis Franklin's face. Well. <laughs> Did you expect otherwise? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> first and ten. He seemed to throw again. Into the flat it comes. Richard Wilde, the fullback. To the 40. Jim Milka makes the tackle. They gain two. Tony Easton for the tenth time in his career at Illinois, which has spanned only a year as you look at other scores. He is now over 300 yards for the game. Purdue leading Michigan State 14 to 7. Our score is 20 to 9 with 3.06 to go, third quarter. Easton has thrown 25 out of 35 with 3.07. To the 48 and a possible first down. John Jostin made the tackle. Jostin, by the way, is playing in the place of Matt Vandenboom, the All-American safety. Vandenboom may have been injured. We'll check on that. Here you see Beverly, number 26, from Long Beach, California. He came into this game averaging like 6.6 .6 yards per carry, and uh, they feel that this is the back of their future. He can really run, burn. He's got great speed and uh, great quickness, and you can almost see the reason why uh, right there on that last play. They stretch the chain, and it's good for the first down. John Jostin, as we said, was a quarterback his sophomore year. He wears number 13. He's got an interception today. A 6'1", 202-pound senior. Started a couple of games in the defensive backfield this year when Vandenboom went down with a concussion and an ankle injury, and he's playing in Vandenboom's place right now. First down, 10, Illinois. They trail 20-9 to with 240 to go, third quarter. It was 7-6 at the half. Richard Riles, nice move. He may have another first down at the Wisconsin 43. Well, Tony Eason spreads it around twice this year. He has thrown in a single game to 10 different receivers. They've had 13 different people catch the football this year. He really does, Vernon. And that's a credit to the type of quarterback that this man is right here. Uh, he throws to all of his receivers, doesn't consider anyone a particular favorite, and uh, that's just the way you're supposed to do it when you're a good quarterback. He, however, have been the interceptions today. He had come in with 11 touchdowns and eight interceptions. And he's not thrown a touchdown pass yet. First down. 20 to 9. It was 7-6 at the half. And then Wisconsin on their first possession of the third quarter. After they had intercepted a pass, John Josty picked it off. Got a 22-yard touchdown run from Chucky Davis. The point no good. Illini got a field goal, and then Al Toon got a 46-yard scoring pass. Here's Easton, pops it across the middle. Outstanding play. Catch is made by the running back, Dwight Beverly, who had flanked out to the left. Jim Milka, 33, and John Jostin, 13, made the tackle. Beverly has been a presence in that backfield today. Here's a quick pop pass. Eason brings him up. First and ten. Takes the pitch. Blitz is coming. Let's it go wide open. That's a 15 to the 10 to the 5. Fumble out of bounds. Brewster, however, who made the catch, will give Illinois a first and goal because he was the last to touch it. Tim Brewster, the tight end. You can see the influence of uh, Justin there. He bit on the fake, and uh, that allowed the tight end, Brewster, to get into the scene, and uh, Easton got the ball to him in good shape, but uh, the key was the fake, and to get the defense to react to the fake, and uh, Easton doing a good job of getting the ball to Brewster. 
First and goal. 20 to 9, Wisconsin leads. Audible, Beverly goes to the left. Motion in the line. Flags are down. And Beverly is stopped. Daryl Sims made the tackle, but let's see against whom the penalty is going to be called. How many times has this happened today for Illinois? Just a lack of discipline, a lack of concentration? Not really, Vern. I, I tend to agree, and I'll, and I'll get to the comment after we hear from the referee. Call. Dead ball, legal procedure. I really believe that the type of system that they have, Illinois that is, that they call a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage. Number one, a lot of players aren't going to hear it. They're going to assume that they heard the, 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 the start count, maybe go offside. The other thing is it takes a lot of time, a, a, a lot of time, and you're going to see a lot of de de delay penalty. So that's the reason. Eason, Williams, touchdown, Illinois. Oliver Williams, a senior out of Inglewood, California. And they're doing some dancing in the end zone. The third time is the charm, one would say. Uh, Easton this time, this is the same type of play that twice today he's thrown and almost had interception, intercepted, but this time he lays it right on the money to uh, Oliver, Oliver Williams, number 17 there for the touchdown. By the way, Williams has now caught two passes for 16 yards. He is one of eight receivers that Easton has used today, and they will go for two points. It's 20 to 15 right now. So if they get the two, they're within field goal range. They will go for two. They've had three field goals and the touchdown, and now the two-point drive. alley -oop. Williams, flags all over the place. They have been Wisconsin interference. interference in the end zone. Well, we've, we've talked about this play in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Uh, you can see Oliver Williams here. He's a great jumper, and uh, he has great effort, and uh, Richard Johnson, number 29 there, interfered, did not allow the receiver the opportunity to catch the ball before it was there, and that uh, was a good call, I thought, Vern. Yeah, even I could see that <laughs> through the specs. <laughs> you no know, controversy about that right. one. Uh, I think we, it's only fair to point out that Illinois, after that last Wisconsin touchdown, they could have just simply folded up and uh, and forgot about this particular game, but they didn't. They showed me a lot of character because they got the kickoff and they came all the way down to score this touchdown. They will probably keep it on the ground here. Double tight end set. Murphy and Mitchell Brookins are the running backs. It's Brookins up over the top. He did not get in. Brookings trying to go over the high route. Well, the key to this play is you got to get close enough to the line of scrimmage or to the goal line in order that once you jump up, you get over. And right here, number 33 puts it to him, Jim Milka. He just put that, he put his helmet right in his body and it did, did not allow uh, Mitchell Brookings to get over. Once again, on the replay, watch 33, put his head in there, and uh, that's it. He's, not getting in. he's a sophomore. He leads the team in tackles, and that was a big one. It keeps the score at 20 to 15. We think, <laughs> I think we're setting ourselves up for a fun-filled fourth quarter. <laughs> if I may become alliterative for a moment. Oh, what a heck of a game. I'll tell you, you get the combination of the crowd and the bay. The atmosphere, the significance of the game, it is just terrific. This is NCAA football live on CBS. 
Gary Ellison brings it back. Cuts it out to only the 15 yard line. We've still got 94 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It was 7 to 6 at the half. It is 20 to 15 now. You've been telling me about this big kid football. <laughs> Glad to have you up here. Well, whatever happened to the three guards in front of dust stuff? It's changed. <laughs> it's changed, believe me. Wisconsin, 85 yards away. They've moved the football here in the third quarter. Gerald Green and Chucky Davis are the running backs. That Illinois scoring drive, 83 yards and eight plays. Easton now has 368 yards pass. Chucky Davis, he's had a big day. He's going for 100 yards for the afternoon. Will not get it with that run, but he picks up about four before Mike Heaven makes the tackle. Davis, Chucky Davis, a junior out of Macon, Georgia. Last year had 457 yards. He didn't play in 1980. He was academically ineligible, but got his grades back up. And this year having a heck of a season. John Williams, we should mention, by the way, is not playing today. He's listed as the number one tailback, and he's out with a sore sternum. And I know Michigan fans remember John Williams from a year ago. Absolutely. He was uh, number one for them, and he ran that big 60-yard screen play for the touchdown, which killed the Wolverines. Second down and six. The inside give will not be enough for the first down as Daryl Bird, number 57, makes the tackle. And you get a good close-up look at handsome Mike White. Third and two. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter clicking off. Now there's equally handsome David McClain. The one that McClain called me the second. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> fair time. <laughs> equal and fair time. Third and two. Wisconsin leads by five. Randy Wright will throw it. He's hit as he lets it go. It's an air ball. Back with fourth quarter action. That's this message in a word from your local station. Is sponsored by Anheuser Busch St. Louis Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Park. And by Avis. Avis works at the same fast pace that you do. We're back for the final quarter of 78,000 plus here at Camp Randall Stadium, Madison, Wisconsin. The Badgers on a four-point roll, a four-game roll, and they have a 20 to 15 lead as we enter the final 15. With former Michigan quarterback Dennis Franklin, I'm Vern Lundquist, and settle back. This one ought to be a great finish. Wisconsin first down, 10 at their own 36. Randy Wright had that last pass complete to Jeff Dolph, his tight end. Chucky Davis. And Gerald Green it is, the fullback, straight up the middle. Mike Weingrad and Archie Carter, number 84, along with Weingrad, 36, make the stop. At the end of three quarters, total yardage. Illinois, 440 to 305 for Wisconsin, but the turnovers have hurt them. Absolutely. Uh, I think the uh, the turnovers are the key if you're, if you're an Illinois fan, but uh, it's really been a balanced football game, and uh, both teams have moved the football well, and uh, it should be a, a great fourth quarter. Second down, four. Well, 745 yards of offense in the first three quarters. Pitch out. Chucky Davis, no. It's Troy King, number 35. And Don Dorf makes the tackle. King and Green are the two running backs now. Troy King, a 5'10 senior out of Freeport, Illinois. And he is short of the first down by a couple. This is the 53rd time these two teams have met, and it's locked. 23, 23, and 6. A year ago, a two-point win for Illinois. And the last time they played here, it was a Wisconsin win, 26-0. 
third and one at the 45 and a half yard line. Power on for the first time today. First down, Wisconsin. Dan Griegas made the tackle. Troy King had the first down plunge. That's the 14th Wisconsin first down of the ball game. And we've got 13 29 to go. 20 to 15, Wisconsin has won its last four. They had to hold off a desperate bit by Michigan State a week ago. Illinois coming off a 26 21 loss to Ohio State. Ben Badgers. Randy Wright will throw. Good blocking. He wants a punch. Goes into double coverage. Picked off. Intercepted. Craig Swope, a freshman out of Florida, has his fifth interception of the year. And watch out. He's got great speed. And he'll save some of it. <laughs> I think he was also running out of gas. Awesome. Yeah. That is the first Illinois interception of the afternoon. The freshman out of Florida, who had a 32-point average at the basketball player last year, has his fifth interception of the season. Well, I don't know why, but Wisconsin decided to go for the big play. And we've said in the first half that Wisconsin, if they got the big play, fine. But they couldn't force the big play, and that's what they did here. They come back and try to go for the big one, which I don't, I don't see any reason why. They were making first down. Stay with it. We'll be back. Other scores in NCAA college football coming up with Brent Musburger, Eric Arsikin following the game. Our score is 20 to 15. Craig Swope, the freshman out of Florida, just picked off his fifth interception. Know where he wanted to go to school initially? Michigan. 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 He went to Illinois. First down, 10. Eason has him back. He's changing at the line. Dwight Beverly goes in the slot to the right side. That catch, Oliver Williams, first down. Let's take a look at the interception run back by a tired, pooped Craig Swope. Yeah, he's going to try. I want to tell you, it's kind of funny, only because you, you think of, uh, of athletes as great conditioned people, but uh, he just, you know, it's late in the game, and he ran out of air here. You can see he's just puffing and puffing. Get me to the sideline because I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want any more. First down, 10, Illinois. They trail by five, 20 to 15. They've got the ball to Wisconsin 39. Audible again. Mike Martin goes with the outside man. Beverly the slot to the right. He's into the half roll. Almost intercepted. Daryl Sims, big number 60. 6'4", 250. Almost had a chance to rumble about 60 yards. A lot of times, uh, Easton just rolling out here, a lot of times, you know, I guess it's just a credit to football now because the athletes are such tremendous athletes that they come out and they can do more than what is expected of them. A defensive guy is only expected to come out and make a tackle. Here's a guy that's got great agility that can move and anticipate the throw of the quarterback. Second and ten. Wide open is Brewster to the 20, to the 19. There's a fumble, but it happened after this uh, ball was down. Richard Johnson made the tackle, but Brewster was all by his lonesome at about the 30-yard line. And Illinois is driving for the go-ahead score. That puts Tony Easton for the day now with 410 yards. Amazing. The second time in his career at Illinois, he's gone plus 400. Brewster has caught seven. Dwight Beverly out of Long Beach, California. And this certainly has helped the passing attack this afternoon because Illinois has elected to run a lot more than they have in the past. And Beverly, number 26, who uh, Coach Mike White feels is going to be a great runner uh, before his career ends here at Illinois. Second down, five. Easton changing again. Mike White looking on. Quick pop into the flat. Mark. Mike Martin, the 
the 10-yard line. It's a yard short of the first down. Martin with his fourth catch of the day. You think they haven't thrown the ball some? Just listen to this. Martin with three, Murphy with two, Brewster with seven, Williams with two, Wilson with two, Lyles has caught nine, Curtis with two, and Beverly with three. They have completed 32 out of 46 for 414 yards. There's Mike Martin on the bench. It's third and one. One running back again, two tight ends, and two wide receivers. 20 to 15 with 10 30 to go in the game. Quarterback sneak. I don't know. He might have gotten with the second ever. And if so, that will give Illinois a third and goal. They were six out of 12 on third down conversions prior to the Tony Eason plunge. Ball is at the eight. And they're going to make sure. You want me to speculate? I'd say he got it. Yeah, I would too. Tony's going to stand up there and make sure, though. Ran the wishbone at American River Junior College. As well as the option. Move him. First and goal. Mike Martin will hurry in with a play selection. Dave Gordon, the freshman tight end, goes out. Crowd of 78,000 urging to watch Wisconsin's defense on. As you look at look at a ground level view of it. 10, 25 remaining in the game. Wisconsin has led through out. And the lead now is 20 to 15, but here comes their ball. Run! They'll run it. Beverly picks up one. Jody O'Donnell, number 44. 6-2 linebacker from Lockport made the tackle. As Dwight Beverly tried to surge to the outside and could not. Stops the clock with 10-10 remaining. Good look at Beverly. On the ground now, Beverly has carried nine times for 30 yards. Riles, the leading ball carrier for Illinois with only 37. In the fourth quarter, Illinois has outscored its opponents 77 to 28. They have not won a game this year in which they did not score first. Pass! Incomplete, flag is down. Intended for Mike Martin. Richard Johnson, number 29, was covering. And may have made preliminary contact. He doesn't like the call. Martin coming back to the ball, and Johnson was put in a precarious situation because Martin was coming back to it and looked like he was going through with it, and uh, he got called for interference. It really looked like it, but uh, you make up your own mind. First and goal. Touchdown, Illinois. No flag. Joe Curtis, a senior out of Chicago. There are a few Illini here who have made the trip up from Champaign or First time today, Illinois has the lead, 21-20. Just a simple off-tackle uh, play, but Illinois got uh, great uh, penetration into uh, the, the defense of uh, Wisconsin, and it was a simple touchdown from Joe Curtis. They go backwards as well as they do forwards. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. Now let's see if Illinois is going to go for three. Uh, or for two. They can't go for three on the extra point. They can change the rules on us here. <laughs> Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten, he's got to set both upright downstairs. Hey, wait a minute. I can't do that. Can you say you got to scoop this thing over to two? <laughs> they will go for two. They lead by one. Easton to Williams. Flag. He got the catch. It's good. That is the same play they tried on the last two point attempt. Yeah, they tried that play so many times. Don't leave us. There may be some fun to come. It's 23 to 
20 Illinois lead. You're about to see uh, Tony Easton throw another touchdown pass. What makes this? Oliver Williams, number 17, is flanked out to the left, and he's one-on-one -on -one coverage with Richard Johnson, number 29. But the defender hat is only looking at the receiver. He cannot see the ball coming, and then Williams goes up, makes a great catch, and uh, comes down with the football, and uh, it's two points for the Illini. There's the leaper, Oliver Williams. 61 yards in eight plays, 251. Joe Curtis got the go-ahead touchdown. The two-point conversion was good, and it's 23 to 20 with 10 minutes to go in the game. Mike Bass, the barefoot Bass, will kick off. Late November. It gets cold in Champaign. Michigan gets down there, he may go at least with a sock. Huh? Yeah, he may have to go with something. <laughs> Here's Bass with the kick. Ellison waits for it, five yards back, and that'll be a touchback and comes out to the 20. So Wisconsin finally yields the lead. And it happened when they let their game plan get away from them. They right. went for the long gain, and uh, Craig Swope made the interception. Two or three times today, Dennis, they have done exactly that. That's right, and every time it's basically cost them some points, and now it's cost them the lead. But uh, the other thing is, uh, the fighting Illini have shown a great deal of character. They come back all afternoon, and they finally take the lead. First down, 10. Randy Wright. Gerald Green, the fullback. And a tough two yards. Well, he's still fighting. May have gotten the third one as Mike Weingrad, number 36, makes the tackle. How significant is this particular possession for Wisconsin? Uh, it's the key. Uh, it's the key drive in the game at this point. Uh, I think that they got to come out and they got to go right back to the game plan. They got to come out and if they get the big play, see the difference is that they came out before. When they get themselves in trouble, they come out and they try to go. They try to force the big play instead of coming out and throwing the simple passes or running the simple plays. And if somebody breaks it and goes for a touchdown, that's different than trying to force the long TD pass. Second and seven, number 23. Up the middle it goes to Gerald Green. We'll have a third and five as Dan Griegas, number 92, makes the tackle. On third down conversions, Wisconsin has been very good. Seven out of 12. They'll send Al Toon, who has a touchdown. Jerry Ellerson and Tim Straka into the game. If you have just joined us, you've missed a bunch. In the first three quarters, it was 7-0. Wisconsin, then 7-3, then 7-6 at halftime. It went to 13-6, then 13-9, finally 20-9, and now it's 23-20. Randy Wright on the roll. He's got the first down plus two yards. Brigas and Pete Mulcrone, numbers 92 and 98, made the tackle. The drive is sustained. And they really needed that. Wisconsin couldn't afford to give up the ball to, to Illinois right now. But uh, right here, he had his man, uh, Tim Stracker, number 42, who ran an in-and-out cut open. But he decided that I got to get this first down. It's too important. I'm going to get it myself. So he puts, tucks it down and uh, picks up the first down. Big play for Wisconsin. Had some offense. Better than 800 yards. Chucky Davis is hit, breaks the tackle, in again and loses yardage. Clinton Hayes, a linebacker from Gardena, California, number 63. And David Edwards, number 27, made the tackle. Now you look at Tim Straka, he'll run the play in, along with Al Toon. It's second down and 15, a loss of five for Chucky Davis on the last play. He's got 92 yards and 14 carries. 41 at the clock running. Three point, Illini lead. Tony Easton on the headset. Has thrown for 414 yards. Right screen play. Right side to Troy King. Oh, and if he'd broken that one tackle, it might have gone for a bunch. But Daryl Bird, who gets up limping, saved it. King was one block away. 
White fouling the sideline. Clock running with 7.05 to go. Illinois has had a dog fight all afternoon. It's weary Badger Bunch hanging on tenaciously to a lead that they just relinquished. And now third and 19. And everybody from Illinois will be coming on this one. Maximum blitz, right in trouble. Caught, dropped. Clinton Haynes from Gardena, California, was the first to say hello. Fourth down. And George Winslow will punt. get it back Wisconsin I mean I don't know uh, Vern that, that series really cost uh, Wisconsin a lot the lost yardage in the first down for the Chucky Davis and then couldn't sustain the drive now they have to kick fair catch Mike Martin at the 49 a 38 yard punt Illinois has old Mo wearing white and blue with a dash of orange 601 remaining in the game the line I lead Following the game, CBS Sports Saturday takes you ringside as highly ranked welterweights Donald Curry and Marlon Sterling square off. And Ruben Munoz takes on undefeated lightweight Roger Mayweather. It's all following the game on CBS Sports Saturday. 6.01 remaining. Tony Eason with 414 yards in the bank already. Has 50 yards to go for another touchdown. Illinois has come back now, and they've really got a surge going. White Beverly, not much there. Errol Sam led the defensive line charge, number 60. 5.45 to go in the game. 7 to 6 at the half. Wisconsin extended its lead to 20 to 9, one point in the third quarter. When it got there, Illinois came right back and got their first touchdown to make it 20 to 15. And then a pass interception by Craig Swoop set up a drive that resulted in Joe Curtis's one-yard run with a two-point play. Eason across the middle, caught White Beverly to the 32-yard line. The running back coming from a slot on the right side. A huge gain for the Illini. Jim Melker makes the tackle. Well, you got to give Easton a lot of credit here again. A lot of people think of him just as a drop-back quarterback, but he can improvise as well as anybody. And you see, when he let that ball go, it was right in between the zone. And uh, he's, just, he's just tough. Easton now with 433 yards, one touchdown. First down and 10 at the 32. Batted backwards by Daryl Sims, number 60. He's had a terrific game. This junior out of Bridgeport. He was suspended for one game earlier this year because, candidly, he hadn't been going to class. Dave McLean said, that's all part of the experience here, Daryl. Uh, start going. He did, and he's played a good game today. Dave McLean walking the sideline. Tony Eason breaks the huddle, brings him up at second down and 10. 23 to 20, Illinois. 4.50 to go in the game. Up the middle, they drive the trap and got about six. Richard Riles makes the carry and Kyle Borland, number 32, with the tackle. Borland, a senior from Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. His dad was his high school coach. I really think, Vern, that that run is so important at this point of the football game because what it, what it does, it gives Wisconsin something to think about. They still have to think about that run as well as the pass. Otherwise, uh, if, they, if they run the football and they're not thinking about it, you're going to see a quick six point. Third and five. Change of the line. Blitz threatened, and it's coming. Easton in trouble. Flips it out incomplete, a one-hopper. who got there was Brad Grabo, number 96, a sophomore from Delavan, Wisconsin. So the Badgers have held. And I expect we'll see Mike Bass coming on. 
but we have not seen him yet. Yeah, he's there. There's a look at Brad Grabo, who was in the face of Tony Easton on the third down play. Big play by the Wisconsin defense, and I'll tell you how much respect they had for Tony Easton. They did not plan on blitzing him from the line. They were going to change their coverages in order to try to get some interceptions. That was the blitz, and it worked. Pass is three out of four today. This will be a 44 yarder. Hooked it a little bit, but not enough so that it's not good. You think he's not happy? Four out of five. But Mike Bass. And the Illini contingent more than just a little plea. 26 to 20. Let me uh, further explain that comment. Uh, the Wisconsin defense did not want to blitz Tony Easton because they knew that he could audible and he could get to the right guy, and they felt like their blitzing him would not allow them the kind of coverage in the secondary and uh, that they'd hurt him even more. So uh, what they did was stay back. 26-20 is our score. 4-0-3 remaining in the game, and Wisconsin will get the ball back. Illinois came from 20 to 9 down and went in front 21 to 20. They went for a two-point play, got it, led 23-20. Mike Bass has just kicked his fourth field goal of the game to give Illinois a 26 to 20 lead. There's a look at the young man. We've got 78,000 plus here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin with former Michigan quarterback Dennis Franklin. I'm Vern Lundquist. Glad to have the rest of you with us. We've got a heck of a finish coming up. Here's the kick by Bass. Gary Ellison, eight yards back, drops to one knee. The Badgers getting at the 20-yard line. A quick recap for you. It was 7-6 to six at halftime, Wisconsin lead. They got that lead out to 20-9 to nine in the third quarter on runs from Chucky Davis and a pass to Al Toon. Tony Eason led Illinois back. A key interception by Craig Swope led to an leading touchdown drive, and Joe Curtis got the go-ahead points. That made it 21-20. And they've just kicked a field goal. Now Wisconsin fighting here in the fourth quarter, down by six, as it 80 yards away with 4.03 on the clock. There's a look at the junior quarterback, Randy Wright. Wright will throw on the half roll. Looks deep, fires deep, man is open, Tim Strucker, can't hang on. And it, was it caught on the rebound? It was. I believe it was. Al Toon, Dennis. It hit Strucker and bounced off, and Al Toon, who had a touchdown run earlier, caught it on the rebound. Tim Stratka from Madison. There, right there. He tips the ball. Now, see 87 behind him. Now, watch the ball stay alive. And 87 too, right there, picks it up. Big play for Wisconsin. Randy Wright hit as he lets it go. Tremendous pressure by the Illini front four. Gary Ellerson was the intended receiver. Take a look again. Now, look at 87 right in the middle of your screen. Now, he's concentrating. Now, watch the ball. It never hit the ground. It, it may appear that it did, but it really didn't hit the ground, and it just popped right into his hand. Very similar to that famous play that Franco Harris had from the Steelers uh, many years ago. Wisconsin version of the Immaculate Reception. Al Toon, they call him Carr or Looney. He had a 46-yard touchdown pass from this man earlier, Randy Wright. 78,000 on their feet, 336 remaining. Here comes the Wisconsin offense. Clark, drop. Drop. Mike Heaven was defending. Michael Jones had the pass in his midriff, but couldn't hang on. Randy Wright, a junior from St. Charles, Illinois. Looking at Michael Keeling and now Al Toon. Dave McLean, fifth-year head coach, 44 years of age. And Al Toon, who is a hurdler, long jumper, high jumper, and triple jumper. That really hurt, Vern. Uh, you had a first down, automatic first down, timeout on the outside-out pattern, and now you got a third and ten instead of a first and ten. Watch Illinois come. White goes into single coverage. It's up for grabs. Who got it? Illinois. Charles Armstead, number 43, his third interception of the season. Randy Wright has.
has been intercepted for the second time in the fourth quarter. The Illini have a six-point lead and the football. You're going to see Al Toon, number 87 from Wisconsin, get out wrestled for this football. 43, Charles Armstead comes across. Now watch him just take that ball away. Comes down with the interception. Really, the ball should never have been thrown because it was covered across the middle. There's a look at Charlie Armstead, who had a couple of pass interference calls against him in the first half. Because of his aggressiveness, and uh, that time it paid off. So the Illini have the ball at their own 11-yard line, and Tony Eason, who has had the hot hand, will lead him up. Eason for the day now, 33 out of 46 for 428 yards. Three wide receivers, one running back, and Gibb goes up the middle to Richard Riles, number 13, the junior college transfer from California. Clock shows 313 remaining. Dave McLean fouling the sideline. Now, Illinois can't afford to just sit on the ball. It's much too early for that. They've got to make first downs. And uh, for them to come out and just sit on the ball and just try to run for first downs and give the ball back to Wisconsin would be a mistake. Saw so Mike White indicate they have three first downs remaining in the game. 2.51 to go. Second down, eight. Illinois. Eason will hand it off up the middle again. It goes to Richard Riles. And that's Riles' ninth carry of the day. He and Dwight Beverly have been the busy backs. Jim Milken, number 33, and Jody O'Donnell, number 44, made the tackle. Again, Illinois wants to maintain the momentum. If they were put in a situation, this is the third down and three, this is going to be a tremendously big football play here. But if they do not get the first down, Wisconsin gets the ball back, probably in good field position, and they got the crowd on their side. So they can't afford to get the football up. See if Eason might go upstairs with it on third and three. I'll bet he does. I would too. Three wide receiver offense. No, up the middle, and he's not there. Riles does not pick up the first down. Mark Shoemate, number 76, the defensive tackle, a senior from Poinette, Wisconsin, made the key tackle. And now timeout has been called by Wisconsin to kill the clock and get the ball back. You can see 76 coming into your pitcher there and making a great arm tackle. But I really think the philosophy is more important here. I think that Illinois, who's a great passing team, that was a situation where they wanted to throw the football, and they didn't. Executive producer of NCAA Sports for CBS is Kevin O'Malley, our producer today, Rick Sharp, and our director down in the truck, John McDonough. Thanks, guys, for some great pictures. Wonderful. Mitch Goldstein, our associate producer, our broadcast associate is Steve Shear. John Plumo, our field technical manager. We've had a great crowd with us. Also want to thank spotting for the Wisconsin team, Joe Cash, and for the Fighting Illini. Got my wife working again. Nancy Lundquist is here in the booth. Wonderful and our lady. Thank you, sir. The reason I married her six months ago. <laughs> and our statistician, Dave Yagi, who's been going crazy over here trying to keep up with Tony Easton's exploits. And that great technical support crew we've had from CBS. It has been a terrific football game. Our temperature today, 46 degrees. It climbed as high as 51. Very little wind. No clouds within an 80-mile radius. We've got two minutes remaining, and the Illini are going to have to give up the football. Brian Morrow waits for it. As Chris Sigourney is back to kick. There's a look at number 15, Brian Morrow. A 10-man front for Wisconsin. See if they're coming. They are indeed, and they're going to take the safety. It's a smart play. They run it all the way out of the end zone. Sigourney takes the safety. Very, very smart play. Absolutely. But it would have been even smarter had they tried to get the first down with the pass on the third down play. That's where I think they made the mistake. All right, coach. 26-22. Well, we'll see how smart this play is. First, <laughs> first thought out of my head is it's a smart play. But they will give up the football on the free kick. And they'll kick it from the 20-yard line. So Wisconsin will have one last shot. Those of you who have not been following these two teams, Wisconsin lost its first two games of the year to Michigan and UCLA, but they've won four in a row. And they're 3-1 and one in Big Ten play. Illinois has lost only twice this season, once to Pittsburgh, got a bad football team, and then last week to Ohio State in Champaign. That's Mike White on the far side. 
26-22. We've had a dash of everything today. You know, the more I think about that play, the more I just like it. <laughs> the safety? Yeah. I really do. Well, it's putting a little pressure on your defensive 11, isn't it? Absolutely, but you put the same amount of pressure that you put on them had you kicked the ball 50 yards. And, uh, you know, the pressure, the fact that the momentum is on Wisconsin side and they're going to get the football, you're going to have pressure on your defense anyway. So you may as well uh, not give them those two points, those critical two points, and make them go the distance anyway. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Chris Sigourney, who took the safety, will kick off now. He's a young man, kicker for uh, Illinois, out of Elgin, Illinois. Senior, 6'4", 205. 154 remaining. And not a soul has left here. It was a sellout three weeks ago. 78,000 plus here at Camp Randall Stadium. The Illini, what a great end zone view that is. Big 10 conference football. The left-footed kicker. Ryan Morrow, number 15. And it's taken at the 33-yard line instead. Now going to the left is Rich Baxter. Watch him fly out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Tom Verriga made the tackle with help from Thomas Rooks. Gerald Green, Chucky Davis are the running backs. We've got 147 remaining in the game. Randy Wright for the day, 11 out of 22 for 190 yards. He's thrown one touchdown, two interceptions, both here in the fourth quarter, and been trapped three times. 54 yards away from the victory, or the lead. Right on the roll, pulls it up, pops it out. That goes to his tight end, Jeff Malt, but it's a gain of just about four. Charles Armstead, 43, makes the tackle. Now then, Dennis, we've seen three or four times in this game where they've gotten away from the game plan and gone for a bunch. Do they need to go deep right now? No, I really don't think so. They've just got to stay with making first down and getting down the field in good time. But they do got to think about the clock. Second and six. Five-man rush. Right back. Into the flat. Not enough for the first down. Catch made by the tight end again, Jeff Nall. His third of the day, Clinton Haynes, number 63, knocks the big sophomore from Escanaba, Michigan, out of bounds. It will be third and two. They have two timeouts remaining. Okay, they have to be concerned here on third and two with picking up the first down, number one. Uh, should they pick up the first down, I think it's real important that they get the ball to Davis. Third and two. We want to welcome those of you who've been watching Ole Miss and Vanderbilt to a heck of a ball game here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. The Badgers trail Illinois 26 to 22. We've got a minute nine remaining. And Randy Wright, the quarterback, the junior, has just run for a first down on third and two to sustain this drive. Wisconsin had a 20 to nine lead at one point in the third quarter, but they fell behind 23-20. They now trail 26-22. Into the flat to Chucky Davis. Can't hang on. Incomplete. With former Michigan quarterback Dennis Franklin, I'm Vern Lundquist. 26-22 with 61 seconds to go. Well, Vern, I had that one called because they picked up the first down, and the first thing they did was go to Chucky Davis. The reason for that is uh, I don't believe that Randy Wright is going to beat anybody deep. He doesn't have the long throwing arm, but with a guy like Chucky Davis coming out of your backfield, who uh, is from Macon, Georgia, he's got great speed, and he breaks a lot of tackles. If you get the ball to him, you never know what might happen, and I think that's what they're thinking. Second down, 10. Ball at the 40. Right, quick drop. One hopper. It's the oh my play. There's a man open. They've got it at the 10. Jeff Nolf, touchdown.
Texas A&M pull that play on Thanksgiving Day against the University of Texas. It went for 80-some yards, and Duden McLean made the catch and never forgotten it. It is a legal play. It's a lateral one-hawk pass backward, and then the touchdown cross to the tight end. And Wisconsin leads with 52 seconds remaining. Bad snap. Vickers up. Hits the upright. No good. A field goal will win it for Tony Easton in Illinois. Wendell Gladham, the victim of a bad snap. Folks, if you've never seen the play before, it is a legal play. You'll watch it as Dennis Franklin calls it. It hops one time. Oh, oh, okay, the quarterback throws it out to two. On the ground, he bounces it to him. And the reason for that is you want to suck the defense in because you think that it's an incomplete pass. And the secondary comes up, and uh, that particular time, Jeff Nault went deep. They got the ball to him. It's just a tremendous play, a tremendous football game, and a tremendous call. Bedlam here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. They are going nuts. They hold a trick play out of the closet. And I know that Gene Stallings is sitting down at Texas right now just grinning a mile wide. That's where the play originated, or the first time I saw it at least. And I delicately called it the oh my play because when the quarterback throws it, there's Eason, Oliver Williams, Mike White. When the quarterback throws it, the linemen turn their back and they say, oh my, my. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Al Toon threw the ball to Jeff Nall. Yes, you will see it again in just a moment. Here's the kickoff. Illinois. It'll come out to the 20, Thomas Brooks. The freshman out of St. Louis. Let's look at it again and watch for the bounce. Okay, watch Randy Wright, number 12. He's going to come back and throw the ball. It's going to hit the ground and bounce up to Al Toon, number 87. Now watch. The ball hits the ground. Bow. Bounces up. You saw it hit the ground. And this is the other. When he caught the ball, and now the defenders come in on him, and you're tight end down the field, wide open, number 88, Jeff Null. Six points. Greg Swope made the tackle, but it was at the goal line. Now the All-American candidate, Tony Eason. Trying to put on the show. There's a part of it. Act number one. He gets the ball out to the 29 with 45 seconds remaining. Illinois has all three timeouts left. Mike Martin made the catch. He's at now 34 to 47. 34 seconds to go. That's a go. Caught. But the tackle is made on Richard Wiles by Kyle Borland. 22 seconds remaining, timeout. And there's a Wisconsin player down. It's Kyle Borland who made the tackle. Timeout has been called on the field. 28-26, Wisconsin has the lead. Illinois has the football with 22 seconds remaining. 26 Illinois trailing Wisconsin. We want to welcome those of you watching the Grambling State Jackson State game. We've got a great finish here. Wisconsin has just taken the lead. On an oh my play. A halfback pass from Al Toon to the tight end Jeff Nolf. It's third and four sports Saturday to follow. Easton back to throw. Good protection. Across the middle, caught Oliver Williams. He's got the first down at the 48-yard line. 14 seconds remaining. They will stop the clock and the first down to move the chain. Mike White, third-year coach. In isolation, watch Oliver Williams. Dennis, you can see Oliver Williams here. The secondary is so deep, there's a big hole in the middle. It was a good call because you want to throw in front thinking that you've got at least enough time to get in position for either a field goal or try another play. You've got 14 seconds. That's good for at least two passes. And uh, I thought that was good thinking on the part of Mike White. Mike Bass has already kicked four today. And now the Illinois team is going over to the far side. The entire team is going to have a conference. I think they checked with the official to make sure it was okay for them to go over and talk with uh, Mike White. I believe you're correct, Vern. 
During the timeout, our referee is Otho Quartz. 14 seconds to go. Mike Bass has kicked four field goals today. And he just missed one a week ago and hit the right upright against Ohio State from 56 yards out, and a field goal puts Illinois back in the lead. And I think that if you wanted to, uh, to attack the defense right here, you got to keep in mind that inside zone. Uh, usually in a situation like this, the defense tends to forget about the tight end. And I wouldn't be surprised at all to see uh, Tony Easton go to his tight end, Tim Brewster. We should make the point, too, Dennis Franklin, that the difference in the game right now, the two points, was the automatic safety that Illinois chose to take. Easton to throw. 14, 12, 11, 10. Incomplete. Jody O'Donnell, number 44. Those of you who just joined us with the score 26 to 20, Illinois was backed up at their own 15 on fourth down. They took an automatic safety. Chris Sigourney ran out of the end zone to cut the lead to 26-22, and they got the free kick. Well, he was on the ensuing drive on a third down play that Randy Wright bounced it to Al Toon, and he threw it to Jeff Nolte to put Wisconsin on top. So that safety is the difference right now. Thought at the time it was a smart play. We'll second guess ourselves. <laughs> Eason, eight seconds remaining. Across the middle, clock, three seconds. And timeout has been called. Mike Bass will get the chance. It's not, it's not over yet. Mike Bass in his first 13 field goals this year. He missed his next two. He missed from 51, and he missed last week from 56. He has kicked four today, the longest of which was 44. This will be a 46-yard effort for the victory. Eason now has 478 yards, 51 carries, 37 completions. And you know, Vern, it's so easy to get caught up into the excitement, but uh, there was one guy down there that knew absolutely what he was doing at every moment on the football field. That was Tony Eason. And uh, he kept us cool. Uh, he had a receiver drop a pass on the previous play, came right back and hit a big play, giving his team an opportunity to win the football game. Wisconsin fans on their feet. Mike Bass, his dad, Tom, is the defensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers and is here watching his son. The barefoot kid from Florida. Three seconds remaining. And the kick will come from the near hash mark. A 46-yard effort. If it's good, Illinois wins. If it's not good, you'll know it. This country just called timeout, and uh, they want Mr. Bass to think about it for at least uh, a, few more, a few more minutes. Mike White, 46-year-old head coach. Counterpart is Dave McClain. So far, 512 yards of offense from Illinois. 416 yards. We've almost reached 1,000 yards of total offense in this game. Easton has thrown for 478, as we said. Mike Bass has kicked four field goals. He has one miss. That came from 28 with a bad snap. And now both teams are going to huddle with their respective coaches. Wisconsin still has one timeout left. There's a good look at Dave McClain, the 44-year-old head coach. Jim Melka out on the field is leading, circling his hands, urging this Wisconsin bunch on its feet. 28-26, three seconds to go. The holder is Tim Dameron. He's a freshman quarterback.
NCAA football will continue after this word from your local station. The celebration for Illinois continues. An exhausted Mike White with Tony Easton, his quarterback, walking off the field. It was Mike Bass from 46 yards away that gave Illinois the victory. Tim Dameron with the hold, which was perfect. The kick at plenty of distance. Sailed through the uprights and watched Mike Bass after he kicked it. Dameron watches. Bass watches. The celebration begins. Illinois has won it. They'll be back before right after this.